gentlemen, this is Sergeant First Class Tim Moore. Go ahead and shake his hand. We appreciate everything that Sergeant Morse does for us. Sioux City, you're the visiting team. The league logo's ahead, the state logo's a tail. League logo's ahead, state logo's a tail. What's your call? Tails. Tails is the call. The state logo. Sergeant Morse will now flip the coin. It is a tail. You won the toss. Yes, sir. Football? Which way you want to kick? Sioux Welcome City back has won inside the, the Tony's Lexus Pizza the Event the Center half. here in Salina, Kansas. Salina Coin toss will underway. The Jake Bandits have, have won game. the toss and have elected to defer their choice to the second half. Salina will be returning the football to start things out on offense. Let's take a look at the lineups. Who's been scratched and who's on the roster? Start with your Sioux City Bandits. Scratched off the roster, off the 25 man, down to the 21 man. Will be rookie defensive back Oscar Opara, wide receiver Brett Van Biden, and a running back Todd Macon, along with running back Darius Fudge, who has not yet uh, reported for action here in Sioux City. R uh, being scratched on the Salina roster is linebacker Brock Long, backup quarterback Curry Parham the second, and defensive lineman Javier Dyer also scratched off of the Salina Liberty roster. So a Salina starting things off. Let's take a look at their offensive line. It'll be Isaiah Trussell, Dana Harris, and Kamali Matthews, the captain uh, on the offensive line for the Liberty. Quarterback is Andrew Jackson. He's third in the CIF in passing touchdowns with 31, 1,390 yards, averaging just shy of 200 yards per game. His wide receiving target, his main one, Rashad Pargo, second in the CIF in TDs, fourth in the CIF in receiving yards. Also Anthony Jones and Ed Smith, and the best running back so far in the CIF, that is Tracy Brooks. He's tied for first in touchdowns with 13, and he's first solely in the CIF in rushing yards per contest. That's a look at the Salina offense on defense for the Bandits. The defensive backing core of Henry Livingston, C.J. Jones, Xavier Spann, and Kenneth Maxwell. Linebackers, Zach Slugger, defensive lineman on the ends, Davon Bridges, along with Ben Peaster and Brandon Jenkins at the nose guard position. 15 minutes on the clock, Greg Conry out to do the kickoff duty. He'll send a squib kick up the right side of the football field that takes a high end over end bounce and is gonna be taken right side of the field by Ed Smith. Takes up the 5'10", has a block to the 15. Near side of the boards to the 20, cuts across midfield and is finally brought down from behind by Braden Mainz at the Sioux City 22 yard line. It's a great kickoff return by Ed Smith who already has a Kickoff return touchdown this season. Salina owns two of only 11 kickoff return touchdowns in the CIF this season. And now we'll have the football to start things off at the Sioux City 22 yard line. They'll be led out there by quarterback Andrew Jackson. Not the president, the second year pro out of Seton Hall. He lines up in the shotgun. He'll have twins to his right, one to his left with one going in motion on either end. He takes a shotgun snap, drops back, looks to pass, steps up in the pocket, fires right side. That pass is complete for first down yardage and then some to the eight yard line. That catch going to be made by Matthew Craig on the far side of the football field here at the Tony's Pizza Event Center. That's gonna be a gain of about 12 yards on the play and it'll be first and goal at the Sioux City 10 right away by the Liberty. Not pulling any punches here with only 45 seconds gone in the first quarter. Liberty threatening to score right away on offense. Here's Jackson once again to the shotgun. He has trips to his left, none to his right. Tracy Brooks, the lone man in the backfield. He'll take the snap and fake the handoff. Play action, fires left side. That pass is just barely incomplete off of the hands of Tyler Jones and falling harmlessly to the turf who was wide open in the end zone. He can't hang on to the pass and that'll be second down and goal for Salina at the Sioux City 10. Tyler Jones with 18 receptions, one TD this season for 180 yards of receiving yards total. So second and goal with 13.35 left to play in the first quarter. Andrew Jackson, the Liberty. They've won three of their last four, losing their last contest against Amarillo. He has trips to his left, one receiver to the lone side of the right. He drops back, looks to pass, fires left side. It's caught, touchdown at Salina. That's Ed Smith who catches his fourth touchdown reception of the season. 
And the Liberty jump out to an early lead with not even two minutes gone in the first. It's six to nothing, Salina over Sioux City with 13-18 left to play in quarter number one. Andrew Jackson throws his 32nd touchdown pass of the season. Smith's fourth reception of the season, and now it'll be Jimmy Allen coming out to do the point after try. Allen has missed six of his 34 point after tries this season. He comes out with Ed Smith on to hold. And he is ready. Here's the snap. The ball is down. The kick is up, end over end. And it's off the right upright. No good. So Salina misses their first point after try. It's six to nothing Liberty with the Bandits coming out on offense for their first time this contest. We'll take a break. We'll be back in 30 seconds. You're listening to Bandit Indoor Football on Fox Sports Radio 620, KMS Sioux City. Send a squib kick and a roll up the far side of the football field. It's going to be taken by Fred Bruno at the 10, 15, 20, midfield 20. Has to break free. He's gone. Touchdown, Sioux City. Fred Bruno with a kickoff return for six. And the Bandits tie it up with 11 seconds on that kickoff return. Well, that's what Coach Strobing talked about in the pregame show. He talked about getting on the board on special teams. That's the second time Sioux City has taken a kickoff return for six this season. And the second time in this building, Fred Bruno, the career leader in kickoff return touchdown to the Bandit uniform, has his first on the season. And now Greg Connery has a point after try to take the lead. Six to six, our score, 13.07 left to play in quarter number one. Andre London to hold, snap ball is down, kick is up, end over end, and the kick is through the uprights and good. The Bandits take the lead really quickly off of the first Salina offensive possession. Bandits lead seven to six over the Liberty with 13.07 left to play in the first quarter. We'll take a break and we'll come back in 30 seconds to Salina, Kansas. You're listening to Bandit Indoor Football on Fox Sports Radio 620, KMS Sioux City. Welcome back inside the Tony's Pizza Event Center, Salina, Kansas. Daniel Versteg with you on 620 KMS and iHeartRadio. Your Sioux City Bandits jump out to a lead over the Liberty without having to come out on offense. They lead 7 to 6, 1307 left to play in the first quarter. Connery will send a squib kick off and up back, and it'll be taken by Salina at the 22 yard line. Up the middle of the field is Tracy Brooks, and he's brought down at the Sioux City 20. And Salina will start once again in Sioux City territory at the 20 yard line. So it's been a passing touchdown by Salina that scored six points and a kickoff return by Fred Bruno going 40 plus yards. And the extra point puts the Bandits up seven to six, 12.59 left to play in the first quarter as Andrew Jackson will lead his team out to the line of scrimmage. 
for their second offensive possession inside 25 yards. So Jackson lines up in the shotgun. He'll have twins to his right, one to his left. Nine lined up on the left hash of the football field. Takes the snap, drops back three steps, fires over the middle. That pass is just under thrown of his intended target. And the pass will fall incomplete. Intended target there for Rashad Pargo. That will fall incomplete, and it'll be second down and 10 yards to go for the Liberty. Andrew Jackson has thrown a couple good balls here, but his receivers have had a tough time trying to haul him in. So here's second and 10 at the Sioux City 20. Shotgun set once again, takes the snap, hands it off on an end around for Pargo. He has room to the 15, now cuts back left side of the field. He's gone. Touchdown, Salina. A 20-yard end around carry. Started on the far side of the football field and taken up the near side instead. Put the Liberty up 12 to seven with only three minutes gone in the first quarter. 12 to seven, our score. Liberty lead Rashad Pargo with a touchdown run. And now the Liberty will come out for another point after try. Boy, it has been a back and forth scoring affair here in Salina, Kansas. Already three touchdowns scored in as many minutes of this first quarter. Now Jimmy Allen will come out to try and shake off his seventh missed point after of the season. Here's the snap, the ball is down, the kick is up end over end, and this time it's through the uprights and good. Salina leads 13 to seven, 11.58 left to play in the first quarter of action. We'll take a break, we'll come back in 30 seconds once again to Salina, Kansas. You're listening to Banded Indoor Football on Fox Sports Radio 620, KMNS Sioux City. Welcome back inside the Tony's Pizza Event Center in Salina, Kansas. Daniel Versteg with you on Fox Sports Radio 620 KMS. The Salina Liberty lead your Sioux City Bandits by a score of 13 to 7 with 11.58 left to play in quarter number one. The lone score for the Bandits was a Fred Bruno kickoff return for six, his first of the season. And now Sioux City will have the football potentially for the first time on offense. Fred did not uh, require his team to go out on offense to start matters. Now Jimmy Allen will come out for the point after, or the kickoff, I should say. And here we go, he'll send a squib kick up the middle of the field, now taken near side of the field by C.J. Jones at the five. Now up the middle of the field, 10, and he's brought down on the Sioux City 14-yard line, just barely tripped up, it looked like. Didn't get a whole lot on that tackle, but it was enough to bring down C.J. Jones. And now the Bandits will come out on offense for the first time at their own 14-yard line. Well, when it comes to kickoff returns, that is now Fred Bruno's 15th career kickoff return for six. Hey, now, well, it's already been a career leader in Bandit history. Now the Bandit offense will come out to the football field with Dylan Turner and Braden Mainz in the backfield. We'll have twins to his right, one to his left. He'll motion Bruno from left to right to make trips on the right side. Takes the snap, fakes the handoff, drops back, fires a deep ball. Downfield, it's tipped away and incomplete. Intended target on the play, that was Londell Lee and Frankie Solomon Jr. tipped it away from Londell, unable to make the catch, and that will be second down and 10. So the Bandits go for it all on the first play of the game. And we're working on that route in the warm-ups. Dylan Turner was throwing a good ball. I think he put it in the right spot. That was just great coverage by Frankie Solomon Jr. And now Turner will line up under center. He has twins to his left, one to his right. Braden Mainz, the single back of the backfield. He'll take the snap and hit it off to Mainz. Right side now cuts up middle of the field to the 20. And he is brought down to the 21-yard line. The carry for seven yards by Braden Mainz. And that'll bring up third down and three for Sioux City at the 21-yard line. 
So the Bandits mixing some run and pass, now trying to take a little bit of time off the clock because the first three scores of the game did not. 10.32 and counting left to go in the first quarter. Salina leads Sioux City 13 to seven. As the Bandits come out on third and three at their own 21 yard line. Single back in the backfield once again, twins to the left, one to the right of Dylan Turner. We'll send a crossing motion, hands it off to Mainz. We got a flag on the play as Mainz is brought down short of the first down marker on the 22 yard line. I think we're gonna get a, an illegal formation of some kind on Sioux City. Let's see what the call is. Illegal defense, oh, it's number illegal seven, defense. lined up at four yards. On the Salina Five Liberty. yard penalty from the previous five. Five yard penalty and only first down first for down. Sioux City as they inter enter Salina territory at the 24. So a penalty benefits Sioux City. An illegal defense call gives them first and 10 at the Salina 24. 10 12 left to play in the first. Salina 13, Sioux City 7. Turner lines up under center, single back of the backfield, twins to his left, one to his right. Once again, he'll send two in motion, takes the snap, drops back to pass, blitz coming, fires over the middle. That pass is dropped by Andre London. Great coverage on the play. There is a flag called by the headlines judge. Illegal defense. And it's illegal defense Number again. Number seven, line back up to back, four illegal yards. defense called five. on five Salina. The previous spot. Repeat, the five yard down. penalty, and it will be. First and five for Sioux City at the Salina 19. So 10 free yards and a first down basically given from Salina to Sioux City. And now the Bandits will have first and five of the Salina 19. Twins to the left, one to the right of Turner. He lines up under center. Both men to the left side will go in motion. Send Bruno on a crossing motion. They'll hand it off to Mainz, left side. He's wrapped up and will fight his way forward for four hard-earned yards to the 15-yard line. Braden Mainz wrapped up at the line of scrimmage and continues pounding forward for four yards. We'll bring up now second down and one at the Salina 15. 9-17 left to play in quarter number one. The Liberty lead the Bandits 13-7. Here from Kansas, Dylan Turner leads his team back to the line of scrimmage. Single back in the backfield, twins to his right, one to his left. Under center, Turner takes the snap, play action, drops back, looks for the end zone. That pass is well overthrown and off the back wall, incomplete. Looking for Londell Lee, Turner just threw it as if he were seven feet tall, and it will fall incomplete. It'll be third down and one for the Bandits. We're looking to try and Keep the advantage with that missed point after try by Salina. If they can keep doing that, then they will have a one point advantage throughout the rest of the game. See what they do here, third and one at the Salina 15. Single back in the backfield for Turner, twins to his right, one to his left. Take the snap, hands it off to Mainz, halfback dive, he's got the first down. Two yard carry by Braden Mainz to the 13 and that'll be good enough for a bandit first down. Sioux City eating up uh, about four minutes so far on this possession. Eating up time on the clock as Salina has not wanted to eat up time, so Sioux City will take the time. And now they'll have first and 10 at the Salina 13. Braden Mainz continues his running back ways. We look forward to seeing Bubba Jenkins' first carry. He's been on some kickoffs already. Not yet on offense. Here's Turner in the shotgun, twins to his right. He will take the snap and hand it off to Mainz this time and trips himself up at the 11 yard line. He cut a bit too hard and was unable to keep his footing. That's a carry for about just shy of two yards and it'll be second down and eight for Sioux City at the Salina 11. Bandits trail by exactly one touchdown, nothing more, nothing less. 13 to seven, our score, Liberty lead over your Sioux City Bandits. 7.15 left to play in the first quarter. The Bandit offense doing a good job on this possession, just churning clock and churning its way downfield. Twins to the left of Turner. He now will motion them from left to right to make trips to the right side. Takes the snap, drops back, dumps it off. Screen play, London 10, middle of the field, and he is hit hard at the seven yard line. That's a passing catch on a screen for about four yards. And it will be third down and four. At the Salina 7. So inside the red zone go Sioux City. We'll have 
third down and four. The Liberty have gotten them to this point a couple times already, but have been unable to do anything with it. Sioux City one of one on third down conversions to this point. Here we go, milking down the play clock to 10 seconds are the Bandits. They'll line up under center once again. Twins to the left of Turner, under center, single to the right. They'll take the snap, dump it off left side, and that's some miscommunication there. Turner threw it behind Andre London and Fred Bruno. None of them were ready for the football. It goes off the left wall, and it'll be fourth down and four, and Strobin is not going to test a fourth down conversion this far downfield after eating up that much clock. He'll bring up Greg Connery to try and nail a short chip shot. With 5.50 and counting left to play in quarter number one, Liberty lead the Bandits 13 to seven. For Connery, this will be a 22 yard field goal attempt. Here we go. Lots of noise, snap ball down, kick is up, and the kick is through the uprights, and it's good. At least get three on that one, 13 to seven, Salina leads, Media. or 13 to 10, Media beg your timeout. pardon. Liberty lead Media. with 529 left to play in quarter number one. We'll take a break, and we will come back to the Tony's Pizza Event Center in 30 seconds. You're listening to Bandit Indoor Football on Fox Sports Radio 620, KMS, Sioux City. inside the Tony's Pizza Event Center here in Salina, Kansas. Daniel Versteg with you on Fox Sports Radio 620, KMS, iHeart Radio, and also video streaming on Pluto TV. That is channel 221 on a Pluto TV. The Salina Liberty lead the band. It's 13 to 10 with 529 left to play in the first quarter, although our scoreboard operator would like to give us a one point lead. Oh, there we go, it's now fixed. 13 to 10, Liberty lead the Bandits. After a 22-yard field goal was banged through by Greg Connery. He hit it so well, it even uh, almost hit our uh, assistant coach up in the booth behind the, uh, the uprights. So Greg Connery now out to do the kickoff once again. Back deep to return for the Liberty is Ed Smith. Back at their own five-yard line. And Connery does not have a football to kick off yet. There we go, now he's got one. So Ed Smith back deep to return, standing now at the goal line, about a yard shy of the goal line there. Connery will send a high end over end kick that forces Smith back all the way to the back boards and he'll take it up the middle of the field. 5-10, breaks the tackle, 15, still on his feet to the 20, steps over a defender and he's still on his feet as he dives forward to midfield. What a great return by Ed Smith, breaks about three or four tackles in the process and almost broke that last fifth one that would have given him the touchdown, but nevertheless, he gets to midfield. And it will be now first down and 10 for the Liberty as they start right at midfield. Just barely on the Salina end of things. As Jackson will line up in the shotgun formation. Twins to his left, one to his right. Takes the snap, he'll pitch it left for Brooks as he takes it now right side of the field and he's brought up down now by Antonio Brown on a carry of three yards to the Sioux City 22. There is a flag on the play and I believe we're gonna get holding. I would believe anyway, but uh, we should confirm the call with our head There's official. There's no foul on the play, the block was legal. Second down. Oh, never mind. No flag on the play, an errant flag, and it'll be second down and a seven yards left to go for the Salina Liberty. 4.52 left to play in the first quarter. 
your Sioux City Bandits trail the Salina Liberty 13 to 10. Second and seven in Sioux City territory. Andrew Jackson will line up in the shotgun. He'll have twins on either end of the football field. He'll take the snap, drop back a step, fires left side. That pass is complete. That's Tracy Brooks at the 15. He breaks a tackle and is shoved into the boards by Zach Slugger to the 14-yard line. And that'll be now first and goal at the Sioux City 14. First and uh, 10 at the 14-yard line. Salina continues their ways on offense here. Not a whole lot stopping Salina so far. As Jackson lines up in the shotgun once again, has a four-receiver set, twins on either end. He'll take the snap and hand it off to Pargo on an end around to the 10. He spins off a blocker and is shoved down by C.J. Jones, combined on the tackle with Kenneth Maxwell. Inside the red zone to the Sioux City nine, and that'll be a gain of five. It'll bring up second down and five yards to go. So Rashad Pargo having success on some of those end around carries to the nine yard line. It'll be second down and five for the Salina Liberty. 3.32 left to play in the first quarter. Sioux City trails Salina 13 to 10. Jackson to the shotgun, he'll have twins to his left, one to his right. Takes the snap, he'll pitch it left for Brooks. He's in trouble, and he breaks a tackle of Zach Slugger middle of the field and will be lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage. Zach Slugger on the stop along with Antonio Brown, and I think I also saw C.J. Jones in there. Yes, I did. A couple of bandits on the stop there, but Slugger the initial wrap-up, and that'll bring up third down and five as Brooks barely gets back to the line of scrimmage. 2.55 left to play in the first. Salina 13 to 10 over the Bandits here in this crucial Northern Conference matchup. Andrew Jackson in the shotgun has twins to his left, one to his right. Brooks in the backfield. He'll take the shotgun snap, drops back to pass, looks for the end zone, fires right side. It's caught by Rashad Pargo. Touchdown, Salina. Rashad Pargo with his 14th touchdown reception of the season, and the Liberty now take a two-score lead, 19 to 10 over your clock, Sioux City Bandits. 2.36 left to play in the first quarter, and Salina on the game clock. has had no trouble scoring the football on the Bandit defense. Similar to the game here to start out the regular season back in March, back in March the 30th, I should say. That was how long ago that first game of the regular season was. Now Jimmy Allen will come out. He's one of two on point after tries so far in this contest. The left Smith on to hold. Here's the snap, ball is down, the kick is up, and the kick is no good. He misses wide right once again. Kick is He's no one good. for three on point no after good. tries. Media. And it is 19-10, to 10. Liberty Media. lead with 2.36 left to play in a quarter number one. We will take a break and we'll return to the Tony's Pizza Event Center in just a little bit. You're listening to Bandit Indoor Football on Fox Sports Radio 620, KMNS Sioux City. Welcome back inside the Tony's Pizza Event Center in Salina, Kansas. Daniel Versteg with you on Fox Sports Radio 620, Cam and S, and iHeartRadio, along with the video stream on Pluto TV. Sioux City Bandits trailing the Salina Liberty 19 to 10 with two minutes and 38 seconds left to play in the first quarter. Andrew Jackson has two passing touchdowns, and Rashad Pargo 
combines for the other one. That was a rushing touchdown for 20 yards. Sioux City has yet to score on offense. It's been all special teams. A Frederick Bruno kickoff return, 43 yards for six. And then a 22-yard field goal return by Greg Connery is all the scoring Sioux City has been able to muster so far, making our score 19 to 10. 2.38 left to play in the first quarter. Let's take a look at some, uh, well, the other upcoming matchups here in the CIF tonight. The new team that will be replacing the Revolution for all their road games will be taking on Duke City Gladiators. That is the NTX Savages taking on the Gladiators at 7 o'clock. And Oklahoma is at Ralston Arena to take on the Omaha Beef. That also kicks off, well, at 7 o'clock. It's 7.01, so those games should be getting underway here in just a little bit in the CIF. Back to this one, though. Jimmy Allen is back out to do the kickoff duties for the Salina Liberty. And C.J. Jones and Frederick Bruno are currently back deep to return this one. We got a whistle and a stoppage of play as the kick goes off of Antonio Brown and recovered by Henry Livingston. But we got an official all the way back downfield that Stop play, and I believe it was because the, the door was not totally shut yet. 2.38 on the game clock. Something was not the game clock kosher was on the football field it. yet. That's why we stopped it. And so they the had to re-kick that one. And Salina's a little bit upset because they might have been able to recover that one off of Antonio Brown. And Sioux City upbacks have had a tough time getting out of the way of some kickoffs this season. So now a re-kick. Jimmy Allen continues to do the kickoffs. Now Antonio Brown will be ready for a potential incoming kickoff, hopefully, anyway. Here we go, 2.38 left to play in the first quarter. They'll send a squib kick up the middle of the field. That's going to roll on its side, taken by Jones at the 7, up the middle of the field to the 15, and he's brought down at the Sioux City 18-yard line. Jones on the return for the Bandits, and it'll be first and 10 for Sioux City at the 18, and emerging out of the bench is a former Mustang running back, that is Bubba Jenkins. Our first look at him in a Bandit uniform, and that's a sight I think Bandit fans could get used to. Can't wait to see his first time playing in the Tyson Event Center next week against the Wichita Force. Here is first and 10 for Sioux City at their own 18. Turner will line up under center with Jenkins in the, in the backfield. Twins to his right, one to his left. We'll send a crossing pattern. Handed off to Bruno on and around. Breaks a couple tackles up the middle of the field to the 24-yard line. It's a carry of six yards on the play for Frederick Bruno to the Sioux City 24. And it will be second down and four to go for your Sioux City Bandits. With two minutes left to play in the first, trailing by nine to the Salina Liberty, 19 to 10. So here comes Sioux City. Turner under center, Jenkins in the backfield, twins to his right, one to his left. The lone receiver to the left side, London. Now they'll send motion to the left side for trips. They'll pitch it left for Jenkins. He bounces off a blocker, cuts it up the middle of the field, and he is across midfield to the Salina 23. That's going to give him about three yards on the play, and it'll be third down and one on the first carry of the indoor football career for Bubba Jenkins. That's something we saw a lot of, him making something out of nothing at Morningside. And he makes something out of nothing there. It's third and inches for Sioux City at the Salina 23. Again, under center is Turner. Twins to his left, one to his right. They'll hand it off to Jenkins. Pounds it up the middle. He's got first down yardage to the 22-yard line, but there is a flag on the play. So we'll wait that call before we see anything. Illegal defense. It's illegal defense, Linebacker and so it'll be first down yards, regardless of the outcome the of the play. Yardage it'll be first and 10 for Sioux City down. at the Salina 18. That's the third time Salina has been whistled on an illegal defense penalty this contest. One minute, 12 seconds left to play in the first. So... Sioux City will have first and 10 at the 18. Here we go. Turner in the shotgun, I should say. Twins to his left, one to his right. One receiver on either end will go in motion. He sends him, takes the snap, drops back to pass. Blitz coming up the middle of the field. Fires left side, it's caught. Touchdown, Sioux City. That's Londell Lee 
for his seventh touchdown reception of the season. That's Turner's 12th TD pass, and the Bandits cut it to three. It's 19 to six, Salina with 47 seconds left of the first. A great throw in catch from Dylan Turner to Londell Lee. That's a connection that's been brewing the past few games. He had two touchdown receptions in the victory against Amarillo. And starts out with one here. Now the point after try for Greg Connery, who's only missed seven this season. Here's London on to hold for the point after try to cut it to within two. Here is the snap. The ball is down. Good hold. Kick is up, and the kick is straight through the uprights, off the back wall, and good. The Liberty lead 19-17 to with 47 seconds left in the first quarter. We'll take a break, and we will come back in uh, 30 seconds to the Tony's Pizza Event Center in Salina, Kansas. You're listening to Bandit Indoor Football on Fox Sports Radio 620, KMNS, Sioux City. Welcome back inside the Tony's Pizza Event Center here in Salina, Kansas. 47 seconds left in the first quarter. Daniel Versteg with you, bringing you the play-by-play -play of this contest. The Sioux City Bandits trail the Salina Liberty by two, 19 to 17 here in the first quarter. The Bandits' only lead so far has been a seven to six ball game with about two minutes gone in the first quarter. Londell Lee just caught an 18-yard touchdown pass from Dylan Turner. And now Greg Connery is out to do the kickoff. He sends a knuckleballing squib kick and a bounce at the five. And on the far boards, right at the goal line, at the one yard line, that's going to move it up to the five instead. Free kick, hits the a field great of play, kick, hits though, the by Greg Connery, pinned line. it on the boards there by at the Rita goal line. Ball be placed at the five yard line. And now first the Sioux City Salina. defense will hope for their first stop of the Salina offense in this contest. So far, Sioux City's defense has not had an answer for the Salina offensive attack of Tracy Brooks, Rashad Bargo, Andrew Jackson, Ed Smith, and well, pretty much anybody that can catch a football at this point. So Salina will have their longest drive of the contest to this point. They've started their first three drives, which all ended in touchdowns at about midfield or closer. So here's Jackson in the shotgun, feet on the goal line, trips to his left, takes the snap, drops back a step, fires right side, and that pass incomplete. Intended target Tracy Brooks. Henry Livingston on the great coverage. Swatting that ball away with two hands, and it'll be second down and 10 with 10 seconds left in the first. We'll see if Salina decides to get a playoff here before the first quarter. They'll have five seconds to do so, and they will elect not to. So they will head to the second quarter with our score. Liberty 19, Bandits 17. They'll switch sides of the field and put 15 more minutes on the clock the for the second quarter. quarter. And we'll take a break. We'll, we will come back with that second quarter in 60 seconds. You're listening to Bandit Indoor Football on Fox Sports Radio 620, KMNS Sioux City.
and welcome back inside the Tony's Pizza Event Center here in Salina, Kansas. Daniel Versteg with you on Fox Sports Radio 620, Cam and S, iHeart Radio, and also on Pluto TV, our score, Salina 19, Sioux City 17, and the Liberty in possession of the football at their own five yard line. It'll be second down and 10, and we'll take a look at some first quarter scores. In total offense, the Liberty 67 yards of total offense compared to the band, it's 46. It comes on 24 rushing yards, 22 passing yards for Salina, 28 rushing yards, and 39 passing yards. Five first downs for the Liberty compared to four for your Sioux City Bandits. Three kickoff returns for 63 yards for the Bandits and three kickoff returns for 62 yards for Salina, but Sioux City got one of those in for six. The Bandits held on to the football for eight minutes and 35 seconds of the first, and the rest belonged to Salina. So second quarter ready to go. Salina lines up on second and 10. We got a whistle and a dead ball penalty. I believe it's going to be on Sioux Ball City. Start. Looked like a oh, I'll start on Salina. Goal the previous spot. First down. Backs them up half the distance to the goal, and that will now be about a second and close to 13 as they'll line up at the Salina 2. So Sioux City pinning them back at their own goal line. That has been the best spot for the Sioux City defense this season. Right around the goal line has been when they've been able to stop offenses this year on either end of the football field. Doesn't matter. They've been able to stop offenses there. There is now second down and 13. Jackson, the lone man in the shotgun, trips to his left, drops back six yards into the end zone, fires over the middle. That pass is caught. First down yardage and then some across midfield is Tracy Brooks. He's brought down to the Sioux City 20. And that is good enough easily for a Salina first down for 38 yards or 28 yards, I beg your pardon. And now Salina will have first and 10 at the Sioux City 20 yard line. So from backed up to their own goal line, they now get a bunch of breathing room into Sioux City territory. One minute gone in the first half. Salina in the shotgun as Jackson, excuse me, trips to his left, one to his right, and a timeout. Timeout, what do we got? Yes, well now we got the timeout called by Salina, timeout. they're going to take their Salina. first, first charge, of charge the timeout of the half. Seconds in length. This will be a 30-second timeout. We'll keep it here, and we'll continue going over those first quarter stats. Want to run down a few of those here really quick. Andrew Jackson, 4 of 7 passing, 39 yards, 2 TDs. Running the football, Tracy Brooks, 2 carries, 3 yards. And Rashad Pargo, 2 carries, 25 yards, and a TD. The two touchdown catches for Salina were Ed Smith and Rashad Pargo. Let's take a look at the Bandits. Still in Turner, 2 of 5, 22 yards, a touchdown pass. And that one to Londell Lee for 18 yards. And running the football, Braden Mines, 4 carries, 15 yards. Bubba Jenkins, 3 yards on a carry. And Fred Bruno, a carry for 6 yards. So here we go, first and 10, Sioux City 20-yard line. Twins on either end of Jackson, the lone man in the shotgun. Standing at midfield, and the snap goes over his head. It's rolling into the backfield, a foot race to the ball. It's on the turf, and it's recovered by Sioux City. Davon Bridges falls on the football, and the Bandits the have it at the, the Salina five. By the what a fortunate down, bounce Sioux for City. Sioux City. The high snap recovered by Bridges. And the Bandits have it at the six-yard line. What a great play by Sioux City as they'll get the football here close to the goal line. A great job by Davon Bridges to outrun Andrew Jackson all the way down the football field. And now Sioux City rewarded with first and goal at the Salina six. Now the wishbone T package backfield for Turner under center three men in the backfield Maxwell the fullback they'll hand it off to Jenkins he's through to the one and that's where he'll be stopped a five yard carry by Jenkins to the goal line and it will be second and goal at the one and Jenkins gets another five yards he has eight yards on his bandit career and now second and goal at the one that goal line formation trying to get the bandits the lead any score at this point gives them the lead. Here we go, Maxwell the fullback, split backs, Mainz and Jenkins. They'll hand it off to Jenkins. Left side, corner, touchdown, Sioux City. Bubba Jenkins, his first career touchdown. 
in a bandit uniform barring the flag with 12.53 left in the first half. If the call goes in Sioux City's favor, Bubba Jenkins is on the scoreboard for the first time in his bandit career, continuing his ways from Morningside to Sioux City. Now oh, our officials are keeping us in suspense. The bandit offense is just walking off the football field. I think it's going to be on Salina. Personal foul, block below the waist, number and six. And it is block below the waist that called by the Salina defense. The, the, kickoff. the touchdown, the touchdown will stand. Bubba Jenkins on the scoreboard for the first time in his bandit career. And Sioux City leads 23 to 19 over the Salina Liberty with 12.53 left in the first half. How do you like that? Welcome to the CIF, Bubba Jenkins. And now Greg Connery comes out for the point after try. It's perfect two of two on the evening. Here's the snap, ball is down. The kick is up and over and, and it's no good wide right. So the broadcaster's jinx still in effect as the Bandits lead a four point game, 23 to 19 with 12.53 left here in the first half. We'll take a break. We'll come back in 30 seconds to the Tony's Pizza Event Center in Salina, Kansas. You're listening to Bandit Indoor Football on Fox Sports Radio 620, KMNS Sioux City. Welcome back to the Tony's Pizza Event Center in Salina, Kansas. Daniel Versteg with you on Fox Sports Radio 620, KMS, iHeart Radio, and also video streaming on Pluto TV. Bubba Jenkins with his first rushing touchdown in a uh, Sioux City uniform, and the Bandits lead 23 to 19. Over the Salina Liberty with 12.49 left to play in the first half. They got the football down near the goal line thanks to a unfortunate shotgun snap by the Salina center. Over the head of Andrew Jackson and Davon Bridges fell on the football to take over on offense. So here comes Greg Connery. He's out to do the kickoff duty and we got a stoppage of play with an issue, I believe, with the game clock. It currently Please reads 35 seconds up. and counting. The game clock back at there we go. Now it's Thank down you. to 1247 the way it should be. We set the play clock. <laughs> A little bit of confusion with the game clock. I actually talked with the game clock operator. They're hosting the state softball tournament here in Salina, and that has left the Liberty a bit short-staffed with uh, some of their stats keepers, game clock operators, umpires in the state softball tournament. Now we got an issue down near the Sioux City bench. Three officials are talking with Matt Ron, Jared DeGeorgia, and Irv Strobin. Don't know what the issue is down there, but they're making sure the clock, I think, is okay. Whatever it may be, if the, the clock ticks down, City it is, is technically. To view the field goal. Because it is above the upright, we cannot. And so some explanation was given. I th think they were talking about the point after try. It was over the upright, and so they could not confirm the kick. Whatever, whatever the explanation was, now Connery will come out for the kickoff. Back deep to return Ed Smith. Here we go, he'll send a squib kick, gonna go off a Liberty up back, taken by Smith, two yards deep in the end zone. Right side of the field to the 10, breaks the tackle to the 15-20, now taken to the near boards, and he's tripped up by Greg Connery, the kicker, at the Salina 24-yard line. The Liberty have had great kickoff returns to this point. The Whenever they've been the able to return the football, they've been able to get to midfield or sometimes better. Now the penalty the the from the touchdown line. run First by Bubba, Bubba Jenkins will be added on after the kickoff. And so that's going to back him up uh, half the distance to the goal to the 12-yard line on the personal foul, which was a block below the waist. 
And now the Salina offense will come out on first and 10 at their own 12. Two minutes and 22 seconds off the first or the second quarter clock, beg your pardon. Sioux City leads 23 to 19 over Salina. Here is the Liberty, first and 10 at their own 12. And the shotgun is Jackson. He hands it off, delayed to Brooks, left side, and he's brought down from behind by Zach Slugger, still on his feet. Oh, no, they finally rule him down at a 23. Boy, Tracy Brooks refused to go down there. It's a carry of 11 in his first down yardage for Tracy Brooks. And this is being met with boos from the Salina faithful. I think they wanted Brooks to be whistled uh, still on his feet. I think he might have kept the knee up. It was a close call regardless of how you look at it. Nevertheless, it's an 11 yard gain for Tracy Brooks and it's first and 10 for the Liberty at their own 23. So they got the penalty back basically. So that first and 10 at the 23. Shotgun formation for Jackson, twins to his right, takes the snap, pitches it right for Brooks and he's wrapped up and met in the backfield by a host of bandits, Kenneth Maxwell and Zach Slugger there to snap him at the line of scrimmage. And it will be second down and 10 for Sioux City, or Salina, excuse me, at the Salina 23. 11.22 left to play in the first half. Sioux City leads 23 to 19 over the Liberty. Liberty offense running into a little bit of a snag here, right about at midfield. And it's also good to see Brandon Jenkins out there, the Texas draft pick. I know he was excited on the bus ride to be playing for Sioux City. Glad to see him at the nose guard position. Shotgun formation for Jackson. Twins to his left, go in motion. Nobody in the backfield takes a snap, fires a deep ball downfield, and just slightly overthrows Anthony Jones. Would have been a touchdown pass if he could have got there. Instead, it falls incomplete, and it will bring up third down and 10 at the Salina 23. Anthony Jones, an IFL vet from Marion University. That's another familiar college or name for Morningside fans. Of course, Marion won the 2012 NAIA National Championship over your Morningside Mustangs by a field goal. Trips to the left of Andrew Jackson. He's in the shotgun once again. Third and 10 from the 23. Takes a snap, drops back a step, steps up in the pocket. Pocket collapsing, dumps it off over the middle of the field for Tracy Brooks. And he is wrestled backwards by Zach Slugger at the Sioux City 23-yard line. That's a carry of four on the play. And it'll be fourth down and six now for Salina. And the question is, does Liberty decide to go for it? Let's see what they decide to do here. They'll have fourth and six at the Sioux City 23. I think they're going to go for it here. Andrew Jackson goes back into the huddle with 943 and counting left in the first half. Ten seconds and counting on the play clock. Jackson in the shotgun. He'll have twins to his right and to his left. Nobody in the backfield. He takes the snap, drops back a step, looks, pocket collapsing, fires over the middle. That pass is caught. And C.J. Jones absolutely lays out the receiver, Tyler Jones, who made a heck of a catch over the middle of the field. He's brought down to the Sioux City 12 on the fourth down conversion for the Liberty. Brings up first and 10 at the Sioux City 12. Great job by Tyler Jones, a CIF product from Central Missouri who hung on after a hard lick by C.J. Jones. We got a flag on the play. Called by one of the lines judges. I believe that's not the head one. Sideline warning on Salina, first charge of the half. Sideline warning called on the Liberty. So no penalty is called, but the second one will be resulting in a 15-yarder. So here's first and 10 of the 12. One of our officials not liking what's coming from the Salina players. As Jackson takes the shotgun snap, fakes the pitch, fires for the end zone, and it's incomplete. Great coverage on the play by C.J. Jones, jarring that football loose, and it'll bring up second down and 10. Uh, looks like the intended target was Ed Smith. Can't quite tell with the numbers. I beg your pardon. That was uh, Jer Anthony Jones who was unable to haul in that pass. Small numbers on these Salina jerseys, and they blend in very well with the navy blue. So here's second and 10. The Sioux City 12. The Liberty have 
Their backs against the wall in these possessions so far. Trips to the right of Jackson. He'll take the snap, play action, drops back, fires over the middle. That pass is incomplete. And again, C.J. Jones on the coverage. And again, it looked like Anthony Jones, the intended target, and it'll be third down and 10. C.J. gets his hand in between another pass. He's still the only defensive back to not have an interception, and I know that a little, uh, haunts him just a little bit. I know he wants one badly. He almost had one down in Oklahoma. He thought he should have had one, and he was a little disappointed with himself on the bus ride back. So here's third and 10 at the 12. Jackson trips to his right, and the shotgun takes the snap, steps up in the pocket. He's going to keep it himself inside the 10, and he will be brought down at the Sioux City 7 by Zach Slugger, far side of the football field. Some extracurriculars going on between Kenneth Maxwell and a Salina receiver that looked like Tyler Jones. It's a five-yard carry on the play, though, by Salinas quarterback Andrew Jackson as C.J. Jones hustles off the field. The subbing in is Antonio Brown. And it'll be fourth down and about four yards to go for the Liberty at the Sioux City 6. Inside the red zone, another fourth down play for the Bandit defense. 6.45 to go in the first half, a four-point lead for Sioux City. Trips to the right of Jackson. In the shotgun, takes the snap, fakes the pitch, looks to pass, rolls out left, pocket collapsing, now rolls out right, fires for the end zone, it's tipped up and incomplete. Kenneth Maxwell on the tipped pass, turnover on downs, and Sioux City will take over on offense. Deep in Media. a Salina territory at the six. 6.24 and counting left to go in the first half. 23 to 19, Sioux City leads. And there will be a media timeout. So we will take a break. We'll come back in a 30 seconds to the Tony's Pizza Event Center in Salina, Kansas. You're listening to Bandit Indoor Football on Fox Sports Radio 620, KMS, Sioux City. was not shut off and we reset it to 6.30. We're still at media timeout. Welcome back inside the Tony's Pizza Event Center here in Salina, Kansas with six and a half minutes left to play in the second quarter. Sioux City leads the Liberty 23 to 19. Daniel Versteg with you bringing you the play-by-play -play of this contest here on Fox Sports Radio 620 Cam S, iHeart Radio and Pluto TV. The Bandit offense comes out after a great fourth down stand by the defense down in the red zone. Turner lines up under center. Jenkins, the lone man in the backfield, the single back formation. They'll hand it off to Bruno on an end around, and he has nowhere to go fast. That's a gain of maybe a yard on the carry by Fred Bruno to the seven. And they will rule it second down and nine yards to go for Sioux City at their own seven. So an end around does nothing. Fred Bruno did rush for three touchdowns against Amarillo, his first three rushing touchdowns of the season in last week's contest against the Venom. We'll have second and nine here. Turner in the shotgun. Jenkins, the man in the backfield, to his left. Twins to his right, one to his left. Two go in motion. They'll take the snap, drop back, flag on the play. That's going to whistle this play dead, and I think we're going to have false start on the Sioux City offense. They sent two in motion, and Jenkins jumped a little early off of the back position our officials are going to have to talk about it here really quick first of all it's a miscommunication maybe but yeah the bandit offense is backing up towards the goal line false start and it is 20 offense false half start on the goal. offense second down so that will back about half the distance to the goal to the Sioux City four and so that'll bring up about a second and 12 and a half if you will with 5.30 left to play in the first half, a four-point lead for Sioux City, 23-19 over the Liberty. So here is a second and long for Sioux City. Turner under center, single back formation, twins to his right. He will take the snap, hand it off to Jenkins' left side, and he's wrapped up and brought down in the backfield. Bubba had nowhere to go. Jacob Latimer on the stop for loss of yardage, just barely. 
And it'll be third down and now 13 on the loss of yardage carry by Bubba Jenkins. He had nowhere to go fast and Jacob Latimer there to wrap him up and hang on for dear life to get the stop. 450 and counting left in the first half. Sioux City now met with a third and long at their own three. Rashad Mungro declares himself as the tight end. Turner lines up in the shock at about three yards deep in the end zone. He'll take the snap, trips right, drops back, steps up in the pocket, rolls out right, fires right side of the boards. That is caught by Andre London, and he will take the hit near the boards at the 13-yard line. Andre London with a catch for 10 yards, and it brings up four down and three. And that will now bring out Greg Connery for the field goal try. So Greg comes out, the offense has done their job, gave them something a little bit more manageable here. With 4.07 left to play in the first half. Bandits lead by four over the Liberty. And now Connery will line his way up for a 52 yard field goal. This will be his longest by nine yards of the season. London to hold. Mites to snap, the ball is down, the kick is up, it's end over end, and it is through the uprights. No, it's no good. It is no good, I thought it snuck its way through. The kick is no good. And so Salina will have the football at their own five with 3.44 left to play in the first half. So Greg Connery misses the field goal, unfortunately. He's now eight of 21 on field goal kicks. Well, that would have been as longest by nine yards, so it's not like that was an easy kick by any means. 52 yards is very tough, and there's also a, a bit of a lower hanging uh, rafter on that end of the football field that can end up throwing you off a little bit. Henry is all too familiar with low hanging ceilings here in the, in the CIF. 3.38 and counting left in the first half. The Bandits trying to take a four-point lead into halftime, 23 to 19. Here's first and 10 at the Salina five. Jackson in the shotgun will have twins on either end. He sends two in motion, takes the snap, drops back, fires left side. That pass is complete at the 10-yard line. Looks like Tracy Brooks makes the catch and Xavier Spann on the tackle. That's a catch for about seven yards to the Salina 12. And it will be second down and three for the Liberty at their own 12. So Salina trying to score now, take the lead on a touchdown. Her field goal brings it within one. Here's second and three, Jackson in the shotgun, trips to his right, fakes the pitch right side, steps up in the pocket, dumps it off over the middle, and that pass falls to the turf incomplete. Tyler Jones unable to haul in that pass, and it'll be third down and three for Salina at their own 12. That one hit Jones right in both hands. He was just unable to haul in the pass. Now with uh, two and a half minutes to play here in the first half. Salina trailing by four. They'll have third down and three for the Salina offense. Here we go, third down and three. Jackson, the lone man in the shotgun. He has twins on either end, a four receiver set. He'll take the shotgun snap, drops back, fires left side. That pass is caught for first down yardage and then some to the 20-yard line. And he's finally wrapped up and stopped the forward progress by Xavier Spann and Zach Slugger. It's a catch and gain for seven yards by Tracy Brooks. And it'll be first and 10 with a... Twins to the right side of Jackson in the shotgun, one to his left. A low snap, and he bobbles it, and he will be down for a sack by Davon Bridges. Davon Bridges gets the stop, nine yards behind the line of scrimmage, and it'll be second and 19 for Bridges' fourth and a half sack of the season. Unless they give an assist to Ben Peaster for his league leading 10th. It'll be first and 10 at the Salina 20. So Salina just slowly working their way up the football field here. They're to their own 20. A great job by the Bandit line. They recognize those bad snaps so well. And Bridges just forgoes his block and gets into the backfield. Now the clock will run down to the 62nd warning. One minute warning. Here on second and 19. One minute, so one minute left to play in the first Salina half. Salina has two timeouts. 
Sioux City Regular football three. timing Media for out. the rest of the half. 23 to 19, Sioux City leads to line up. One minute remaining here in the first half of action. We'll take a break and we'll come back in 30 seconds to the Tony's Pizza Event Center in Salina, Kansas. You're listening to Bandit Indoor Football on Fox Sports Radio 620, KMS Sioux City. Welcome back inside the Tony's Pizza Event Center here in Salina, Kansas. Daniel Versteg with you on Fox Sports Radio 620, Cam and S, iHeart Radio, and Pluto TV. At the end of, uh, well, it looks like one quarter, the Omaha Beef lead the Oklahoma Flying Aces 12 to nothing. And the Duke City Gladiators lead the NXT Savages 24 to nothing. With 3.08 left to play the in the first quarter start there. On the snap. Please reset to so one minute. they'll reset the, the game clock. The, the game clock snap. started a few seconds early. Here in this one, though, in Salina, the Bandits lead the Liberty 23 to 19 with a minute left in the first half. Salina will have second and 19 at their own 11. Jackson will line up in the shotgun. He'll have twins to his right and now motion them from right to left for trips. He takes the snap, drops back three steps, fires right side, and that pass is incomplete. Xavier Spann on the coverage once again, denying Anthony Jones the reception. And it'll be third and 19 for Salina as the clock stops with 57 seconds left to play in the first half. Sioux City leads by four. 23 to 19, trying to hold on to that lead and maybe if they get an opportunity, add to it before the halftime break. Salina will have a third 19 play here from their own 11 yard line after a bad snap, lost them nine yards and Bridges finished off the play. Jackson in the shotgun, he has four receivers. Evenly distributed, drops back, looks to pass, rolls out left, the pressure's coming. He's still on his feet at the five, fires left side of that pass, is caught. And that looked like Anthony Jones making the catch at the 20-yard line. Clock will continue down to 43 seconds, and now a timeout will be called by timeout. Sioux, City. Sioux City. First time Timeout called by half. Sioux City, they'll have four down. In length. Four Please down and 10. 48 seconds. Liberty will have fourth and 10 at their own 20. But a timeout will be called uh, with 43 seconds left of the first half. As they get ready to see what will happen, they are bringing Jimmy Allen out for a field goal attempt. So it looks like Salina is going to be content with three points. 48 seconds left in the first half. As the Bandits use one of their three charge timeouts of the half. Salina's so only used one as well, so each team even with two timeouts left in this one-minute warning. Tracy Brooks out there to do the hold for Jimmy Allen. His longest field goal of the season has been 35 yards, and he's 4 for 11 coming into this contest on field goal kicks. This will be his longest of the season by about 10 yards. This will be a 45-yarder if he can convert. Fred Bruno is waiting under the goal post should he come up short. Here we go, a 45-yarder. Here is the snap, the ball is down, the kick is away, end over end, tailing left, and it's through the uprights and good, and plenty of distance on that one. And Jimmy Allen now has a new long on the season, 45 yards, his fifth made field goal of the season. And the Liberty cut it to within one, 23 to 22 is our score with 42 seconds left seconds. in the first half. We'll take a break rule, and we'll come back in 30 seconds to Salina, seconds Kansas. To You're listening to Bandit Indoor Football on Fox Sports clock. Radio 620, KMNS Sioux City.
Welcome back inside the Tony's Pizza Event Center in Salina, Kansas. Daniel Versteg with you on Fox Sports Radio 620 Cam and S, iHeart Radio and Pluto TV. 44 seconds left of the first half. And the Sioux City Bandits lead the Salina Liberty 23 to 22. Happy Memorial Day weekend to all of those taking advantage of a three-day weekend. And thank you to the service of many fine veterans and military personnel. Thank you for the freedom that we are able to enjoy here in Salina, Kansas, of partaking in indoor football. Your sacrifices are never forgotten, especially on this Memorial, Memorial Day. Jimmy Allen comes out for the kickoff, and Bruno and Jones are back deep to return. They'll decide who gets it immediately following the kickoff. It's a squib kick, going to bounce right into the hands of Fred Bruno at the four-yard line. Up the middle of the field, 15, near side of the 20, near boards, midfield, 20, 15, still on his feet, and he's finally shoved into the boards in Salina territory at the 14-yard line. They're going to rule him down, Fred Bruno. Doing a phenomenal job returning the football here in this contest. And Sioux City will have only 14 yards to go to potentially get a score on the board before halftime. 37 seconds left in the first half. Two timeouts apiece for either team. And the Bandits only lead by one. 23 to 22 is our score. Dylan Turner leads his team into the huddle. Three touchdowns have been scored by Sioux City and one field goal to this point. Now Turner will lead his team to the line of scrimmage. Braden Mines back out there, and we have a timeout called by Sioux City. Timeout, Sioux City. I think they wanted Second a shot or a play clock reset, I beg your pardon. Well, they did not get one. Matt Ron turned around right away and tried to look for our umpire for help, and he wasn't able to get anything. And so they're going to have to burn one of their timeouts before the offensive possession even begins. They're down to one timeout left, so they're going to have to use it uh, wisely here. Almost said smartly. Don't believe that's a word. Here on first and 10 at the Salina 14, the Sioux City offense comes out of their second charge timeout of the half. And Turner lines up under center. Single back formation, twins to his right, one to his left. One on either end will go in motion. And we got offsides. They'll drop back. Free play. Turner fires right side. Lee makes the catch at the 10. Spins off a defender. Breaks another tackle. And he's brought down inside the red zone of the nine-yard line. That'll be a gain of five. And, well, it's either accept the penalty and don't lose a down or decline the penalty and lose a down. But give uh, give some stats there to Londell Lee. Let's see what uh, I think they're going to accept it. Let's see what the call is. Offside. Number it is offsides. Five yard penalty for previous spot. Repeat first down. And they're going to accept it for five yards. And so it'll be first down and now five inside the Salina red zone at the nine yard line. 30 seconds left of the first half. 23 to 22 is our score. Sioux City and Salina matching up is always a great contest. We saw that firsthand of the Tyson Event Center, and this one's shaping up to be another good one. Turner will make his way to the line of scrimmage under center. Mainz the man in the backfield. Twins to his right, one to his left. Turner will take the snap, drops back, looks to pass, dumps it off. Mainz left side to the five, powers his way forward, and he's only going to get to the five-yard line there. The clock will continue to run. It ticks down to 20 seconds left of the first half. Gain of four will bring up second down and one at the five, and a timeout's going to be called by Sioux timeout. City. Sioux City. They're going to use their final of the half. third Please reset the game and clock to 20 final seconds. timeout of the half. The They're going to reset it to 20 seconds with our score. Sioux City 23, Salina 22. Let's see if we can check some scores from around champions indoor football. Omaha continues to lead Oklahoma. And that one, I believe, getting started into the second quarter of action in Ralston Arena. Omaha is still with the advantage. Just into the second quarter, Duke City leads the Savages 32 to six. NTX, the Savages, the replacement team for the Texas Revolution, finishing out their road games. They will be, the Savages will be at the Tyson Event Center on the 8th of June, the last home regular season of the game, of the season, I should say. The next home regular season game for Sioux City will be taken on Wichita the 1st of June. And then the Savages on at the eighth, and two road games will round out the season for the Bandits. Here's second and one, ball with a Salina five. 
Turner on the sh in the shotgun, twins to his right, one to his left. He takes the snap, drops back, looks for the end zone to pass, steps up in the pocket and throws it out of bounds off the back wall, incomplete. Threw it over the head of Londell Lee. I think that's what he's intended, though. He had pressure coming, got to get rid of the football there, and you don't want to make the clock run because then you got a line quick back up at the line of scrimmage and spike it. Now Sioux City faces a third down and one at the line of five with 16 seconds left of the first half. 23 to 22, Sioux City wants to make it a potential two score game before half. They could get it to as much as nine over the regular touchdown and the extra point to follow would make it an eight point game. Here's Turner in the shotgun, he'll have trips to his left. Mites the man in the backfield, takes the snap, drops back, flag, fires over the middle, that pass is tipped around and it's Incomplete, I believe that went off four different sets of hands. It went off of Blake Frank, Braden Mainz, and a Salina defender, Travis Taylor almost illegal had the interception. The flag six. is on Salina though, on a legal defense. The the spot. They're gonna no give him half the distance to the goal to the two and a half, the and it'll be first and goal snap. for Sioux City. Clock will start at the snap with 10 seconds left in the first half. So Sioux City is the beneficiary of a Salina penalty again for a legal defense. Fourth time in the contest, they've been unable to get a right defensive formation. So first and goal, Sioux City. Turner under center, single act formation, twins to his left, one to his right. He'll cross patterns, they'll end around, handoff to Bruno, and he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Sioux City. That's Fred's fourth touchdown run of the season and fourth in two games. And the Bandits jump out to a 29 to 22 lead over the Liberty. A great touchdown run by Fred Bruno. He's been doing that his whole career. And he adds his fourth of the season there. As now Connery will come out to attempt the point after to make it a 30 to 22 game with eight seconds left in the first half. Here is a Greg the leg at Connery with Andre London on to hold. Here's the snap, ball is down, the kick is up, end over end, a line drive kick is through the uprights and good. 30 to 22, Sioux City leads, eight seconds left in the first half. We'll have that kickoff coming up for you in 30 seconds. We'll return to Salina, Kansas in 30. You're listening to Bandit Indoor Football on Fox Sports Radio 620, KMS Sioux City. Welcome back inside the Tony's Pizza Event Center in Salina, Kansas. Daniel Versteg with you on Fox Sports Radio 620, Cam and S, iHeart Radio, and also on Pluto TV Channel 221. The Sioux City Bandits lead the Salina Liberty 30 to 22 with only eight seconds left to play in the first half of action. Doesn't give Salina much. It's basically the kickoff return they can make something out of it, that'll end the first half. If they can't, they'll have one offensive play left. So Connery will come out for the kickoff, and Ed Smith awaits the kickoff. He'll send it to the right side of the football field, where it's taken by a Salina up back to the 5-10, near side of the field. Still on his feet is Isaiah Barfield, and he's brought down to the 14. The clock did run out on the first half. And that will be it for the first Back half. Down. Clock runs out, Sioux City leads 30 to 22, heading into the halftime break. The Bandits with a much needed lead and a tie for second place in the Northern Conference. Hopefully Sioux City hangs on to that for the next half hour of the game. We will take a break and we'll come back with our halftime report. We'll get you stats from this contest and other scores from around champions indoor football. Get you up to date on that as well 30 to 22 our score the bandits lead the salina liberty 
here with the halftime break in Salina, Kansas. We'll take a break. We'll be back in a few minutes to Salina. You're listening to Bandit Indoor Football on Fox Sports Radio 620, KMNS, Sioux City.
And welcome back inside the Tony's Pizza Event Center in Salina, Kansas. The Sioux City Bandits lead the Salina Liberty by a score of 30 to 22 after trailing the first quarter by the score of 19 to 17. Not as many, not as many points put up in the second quarter as there was in the first. Let's run down the scoring summary for you. Andrew Jackson opened things up with a touchdown pass to Ed Smith. That was a Fred Bruno touchdown return to make it 7-6 Sioux City. Another touchdown for Salina. This time a rushing touchdown by Rashad Pargo made it 13-10. A field goal by Sioux City, or 13-7, I beg your pardon. A field goal by Sioux City then made it 13-10. It was 19-10 Salina after a touchdown pass to Rashad Pargo. Then Dylan Turner completed a touchdown pass to Londell Lee, made it 19-17. And since then, Sioux City has scored 14 unanswered points with a touchdown run by Bubba Jenkins, his first touchdown run in the CIF, and Fred Bruno, his touchdown run for two yards. I beg your pardon. Uh, Sioux City has scored, uh, well, actually only a touchdown unanswered. I missed the one field goal there by Salina to make it 23 to 22. The touchdown afterwards made it 30 to 22. That's where we sit here at the halftime break in the Tony's Pizza Event Center. Take a look at the, the team stats right now. In total offense, Sioux City only 68 yards of total offense on 19 plays. Salina 117 yards of offense on 28 plays. That's coming from 105 passing yards and 12 rushing yards. They've lost a lot on some of those uh, bad snaps that has brought their total down quite a bit. Take a look at Sioux City, 36 passing yards, 32 rushing yards, nine first downs for the Liberty, seven for the Sioux City Bandits. Each team with four plus kickoff returns and each team with 95 kickoff return yards or just slightly more. Salina has been penalized, get this, eight times for 38 yards. I know four of those off the top of my head are just simply illegal defense penalties. And Sioux City penalized only once for three yards. Salina has 17 minutes and seven seconds of time of possession, and Sioux City 12 minutes and 53 seconds of time of possession. The Bandits one of three on third down conversions. Salina two of five on third down conversions, and one of two on fourth down conversions. And each team has missed two opportunities to score in the red zone. Let's take a look at the Liberty on offense individually, first of all is Andrew Jackson leading the way passing, 10 of 19, 105 yards, two TDs. Running the football, Rashad Pargo leads that category, two carries, 25 yards, and a touchdown. Tracy Brooks, four carries, 14 yards, and Andrew Jackson with a carry for six yards. Running the football, it's, or receiving the football, I should say, Tyler Jones has two catches for 23 yards. Tracy Brooks, five catches for 54 yards. Ed Smith with a touchdown reception for 10, and Rashad Pargo a touchdown reception for nine. Jimmy Allen is one of one on field goals and one of three on extra point attempts. Ed Smith has taken three kickoff returns back for a combined 78 yards. On the defensive end of the football for Salina, leading the way in tackles is Dontre Matthews, along with Jacob Latimer. Each of them with three total tackles. Latimer with a half a tackle for loss, along with Travis Taylor. Those are the two Salina defenders with tackles for losses so far. Let's take a look at the Bandits individually in this one. Dylan Turner, four of eight passing, 36 yards in a TD. Running the football, it's Braden Mainz who has four carries for 15 yards, no touchdowns. Bubba Jenkins, four carries, eight yards. He has a touchdown. And Fred Bruno has three carries for nine yards. He also has a touchdown run. Andre London with two catches, 14 yards. Londell Lee with one touchdown reception for 18 yards, and Braden Mainz has a catch for four yards. Greg Connery, one of two, his field goal made from 22 yards, and he's three of four on extra point tries so far. Frederick Bruno with two kickoff returns for 75 yards in one TD. He's averaging 37 and a half yards per kickoff return. His touchdown return was for 43 yards. Leading the way in tackles is Kenneth Maxwell. He has five. Zach Slugger has four. And uh, Greg Connery, get a load of this. The kicker has a three and is third on the team in tackles tonight. Tackles for loss, that's Ben Peaster. He leads uh, all defenders across the CIF in tackles for loss. 
He now has a league high 14 tackles for loss this season. Depending on how you give assists, he has 15 by some numbers, 14 by the numbers I'm looking at. Nevertheless, he has one tonight and two pass breakups by, excuse me, CJ Jones tonight. Five total by the Sioux City defense. They are getting in the way of many passes from a Salina quarterback, Andrew Jackson. And they are playing some incredible defense on Andrew tonight so far in Salina. Some scores from around CIF. The last update in Omaha is that the Beef lead the Flying Aces 12 to nothing. We'll see if we can get you uh, potentially a more up updated score, I beg your pardon, of that one. And the Duke City Gladiators lead the NXT Savages, I beg your pardon, the NTX Savages by a score of 42-6 is the score there. Let's see if we can get uh, an update on the Omaha Beef game. As of right now, no updated scores so far, but we'll we'll do our best. Right now, it's 12 to nothing. That's what we're seeing, and that's uh, all we're able to see. So, if you do have an updated score, if that score on the league website is wrong, don't be afraid to tweet it at me at Daniel VSPXP. Love to give everybody up to date on uh, the scores from around Champions Indoor Football. So we'll take a break and we will return by the second half here in Salina, Kansas. Tony's Pizza Event Center, the location, our score. Sioux City leads the Liberty by a score of 30 to 22. We'll take a break and we'll return to Salina, Kansas in a few minutes. You're listening to Banded Indoor Football on Fox Sports Radio 620, KMS, Sioux City.
Welcome back inside the Tony's Pizza Event Center in Salina, Kansas. Daniel Versteg with you on Fox Sports Radio 620 Cam and S, iHeartRadio and Pluto TV. Our score heading into the second half is Sioux City 30 and Salina 22. Some updated scores from around CIF. Duke City leads the Savages 52 to 6. And thanks to Jeffrey Hilger for the score update. Oklahoma leads Omaha 17 to 13 with 9.52 left to play in the second quarter. And he adds uh, upset alert watch. Potentially, we'll see. Still a lot of time left in that game, of course. Uh, 30 to 22, our score. Sioux City leads. And they will get the football as well to start off the second half. They deferred their choice to this point and will be now starting the game or the second half on offense. As Sioux City now leads by eight, a, another score puts them up by two scores regardless of how they do it. Field goal touchdown doesn't matter. Next score makes it a two score game. Right now still a one score game. A touchdown two point conversion can tie it. But uh, that would be a little bit of a specific circumstance there. So 15 minutes on the third quanter clock, and we are ready to go with the Bandit Indoor football continuing here in the second half. It is 30 to 22. The Bandits trying to hang on and get a much needed victory to advance to the overall and uh, claim the overall second spot in the Northern Conference in the standings. A victory bumps Salina down to 500, four and four, and a victory by the Bandits makes them five and three. And would give them sole possession a second place, not needing a tiebreaker, at least at this point in the season. So we're ready to go kickoff. Coming up in just a little bit, CJ Jones, Fred Bruno back deep to return for the Sioux City Bandits. The back door is closed behind the end zone. There it goes, and we're ready to go. Jimmy Allen will tee the football off. As Salina will try and see what they can do to slow down this bandit offense that has scored 20 points in the time it's taken Salina to score three. That's where we're at, 30 to 22, our score. Jimmy Allen will be sending the kickoff away from the left side of the football field. He'll send a low line drive knuckleballing kick. Bounces over the head of C.J. Jones off the back wall. Taken by Fred Bruno up the middle of the field. And he's brought down before the five-yard line at the three. And so that'll move him up to the five. And Fred Bruno just good enough to get it out of the end zone on that one. The runner and so now the bandit offense the will start their rules. possession we'll at their own five-yard five line. Two City. We'll see what the bandit offense can do. Eating up clock is crucial here in the third quarter. Just run it down as much as they can. That would be very helpful to their cause here against Salina. Don't want that clock to be their enemy. As Turner lines up in the shotgun, Bubba Jenkins, the man in the backfield, twins to his right, one to his left. Turner sends two to the right in motion, takes the snap, option play, keeps it himself up the middle. He gains three yards to the eight-yard line. Gain of three, at least second down and seven on the QB keeper by Dylan Turner. Looked like an option play anyway. That was the style they were running with Bubba Jenkins there. Had the opportunity to pitch it to him, did not elect to do so. Now at least second down and seven at the Sioux City eight yard line. 14-22 left to play in the third quarter. They'll line up this time under center. Single back formation with Bubba Jenkins in the backfield. Twins to his left, one to his right. Turner sends two in motion, takes a snap, drops back to pass, pump fakes right side. The pocket's collapsing to the left. He rolls out left. That pass is caught by Londell Lee as he fires to the 20-yard line. A great catch by Londell Lee. He came down sitting on the pad on the far side of the football field. That's a gain of 12, and it's good enough for a Sioux City first down at the 20. A great passing catch by who else? Dylan Turner and Londell Lee. First and 10 of the Sioux City 20. Salina trying to hold off this red hot Sioux City offense. Three game winning streak. He take it in here to Salina. Turner will send two to his right in motion. A crossing motion pattern. They fake the end around. He'll pitch it left for Jenkins. He stutter steps and gains about two yards as he gets out of the backfield. A little short carry there by Bubba Jenkins to the 22. It'll be second down and eight for Sioux City at their own 22. 
Bubba maybe having a little bit of trouble trying to find the holes here in arena football. It's a bit of a much different game than outdoor football, and so the maybe the holes don't open up quite as quickly for him. That's something that just happens with rough reps here in indoor football. Single back formation under center. Turner takes the snap, drops back, five-step drop, fires right side, and that pass is complete. On the near side of the football field, that's Frederick Bruno inside the Salina 20-yard line to the 17, and it'll be first and 10 for Sioux City at the Salina 17. Frederick Bruno open for the touch or the catch on the near side of the football field. That's his first catch of the game. He's had such an impact in other ways. He hasn't hauled in a pass yet. So it'll be first and 10 and 17. Turner under center once again. Single back of the backfield. Takes the snap. Fakes the end around. Hands it off to Jenkins. And he's tripped up from behind at the 15-yard line. Travis Taylor on the stop for the Salina Liberty. It's a carry for two yards to the Salina 15. And it'll be second down and eight to go for Sioux City. Again, just eating clock. Three minutes already taken off the third quarter clock. 11.55 left to play in the third. Sioux City leads by eight over the Liberty, 30 to 22. The Sioux City offense just eating up clock right now. Here's second down and eight for Sioux City. At the Salina 15. Twins to the left, one to the right. Turner under center, takes the snap, play action, drops back, pocket collapsing, he rolls out right, keeps it himself across the 15, spins off a defender, and he's brought down to the nine-yard line. That's a carry of six on the run by Dylan Turner into the red zone, and now it'll be third down and two for Sioux City inside the Salina red zone of the nine. Well, Sioux City... Score here would do wonders for their effort here in the second half. Turner will line up under center. Jenkins, the man in the backfield. Twins to his left, one to his right. Turner will take the snap, hand it off to Bruno on an end around. He's got first down yards to the five, splits the defense, and he's brought down just shy of the goal line at the one yard line. That's where they'll mark him down here. Down at the one, and now the goal line formation will come out for Sioux City at the one. A great carry for nine yards by Fred Bruno. Give him eight, maybe. And it'll be first and goal for Sioux City at the one. Great job there by the Sioux City offense. Here's the goal line stand. Turner bobbles the snap, hands it off for Mainz. He fights forward, and he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Sioux City. That is Braden Mainz, third the rushing game touchdown of the season. And the Bandits lead by two the scores, 36 to 22. 10 18 on the game. A clock. short one yard carry by Braden Mainz, and the Bandits are into the end zone once again tonight. It's the fifth time they've found pay dirt here at the Tony's Pizza Event Center. Now, Greg Connery out to do the point after trying to make it a 15 point game. 10-18 on the third quarter clock. Connery to kick, London to hold. Here's the snap, the ball is down. The kick is up and the kick is straight through the uprights off the back wall and it is good. 37 to 22, Sioux City leads. 10-18 left to play in the third. We'll take a break and we'll come back with the kickoff in 30 seconds. You're listening to Bandit Indoor Football on Fox Sports Radio 620 KMS, Sioux City. <laughs> Welcome back inside the Tony's Pizza Event Center in Salina, Kansas. Daniel Versteg with you on Fox Sports Radio 620 KMS, iHeart Radio, and video streaming on Pluto TV. 10-18 left to play in the third quarter. Sioux City leads Salina 37-22. 
Now Greg Conry will be kicking off from left to right as I view it here in Salina. He sends a high end over end kick, gonna be taken by Smith at the goal line. Far side of the field of the 10, he's wrapped up and thoroughly brought down by Londell Lee at the 13 yard line. Kickoff return of 13 yards will bring up first down and 10 at Salina's own 13 yard line. So now a Sioux City defensive stand could uh, put this game potentially out of reach. Don't want to say so just yet because you never know what could happen with this Liberty football team that has hang hung on to a game at the Tyson Events Center that Sioux City thought might have been in their grasp and should have been a victory. Here's first and 10 at the Salina 13. Jackson's going to line up in the shotgun. He'll have trips to his left, one to his right. One on either end will go in motion. Takes a snap, drops back, pocket collapsing, fires a deep ball downfield, and that pass is incomplete. The flag is going to be down, and I hope, I hope our officials saw the right call there. Pass interference is going to be on pass Salina. Number 12 defense. No, whoa, really? Spot, oh my goodness, I do not agree with that call. That's pass interference on the Sioux City defense. They're gonna get Xavier Spann for getting arm tied with a Salina receiver. I'm not sure I agree with that call. Nevertheless, it's 15 yards and it's first and 10 at the Sioux City 22. Salina gets bailed out big time. Here's Jackson in the shotgun. He'll have trips to his left. One man in the backfield, none to his right. Two go in motion. He takes the snap, drops back three steps, looks to pass, steps up in the pocket, fires left side. That pass is complete to Matthew Craig up the middle of the field to the 15 and down to the 14. It's a catch and run of eight yards to the 14, and it'll be second down and two for the Liberty at the Sioux City 14. Matthew Craig, a... CIF vet from Southeastern, all the way down in Florida, NAIA school. Here's second down and two. All at the Sioux City 14, shotgun formation again for Jackson. He has twins to his right, one to his left. 9.05 to go in the third. He takes the snap, drops back, fires over the middle. That pass is complete for the touchdown. Touchdown, Liberty. It looks like Ed Smith on the reception. For six, that's his second touchdown catch of the game, and the Liberty cut it to 37 to 28 with 8.55 left to play in the third quarter. So a touchdown passing catch from Andrew Jackson to Ed Smith. Cuts the lead a bit closer, and the extra point will make it a one possession game once again. We'll see what Jimmy Allen can do. He's missed two point after tries to this point. But he's perfect on 45-yard field goals so far. Here's Brooks on to hold. Allen to kick. And the snap, ball is down. The kick is away, and the kick is good. Kick is good. Liberty make it a one-score game. 37 to 29. Sioux City leads with 8.59 left to play in the third quarter. We'll take a break and be back in a minute to the Tony's Pizza Event Center in Salina, Kansas. You're listening to Bandit Indoor Football on Fox Sports Radio 620, KMS, Sioux City. Welcome back inside the Tony's Pizza Event Center in Salina, Kansas. Daniel Versteg with you on Fox Sports Radio 620, KMS, iHeartRadio, and also video streaming 
on a Pluto TV. Your Sioux City Bandits lead the Salina Liberty 37 to 29. But we're back to the point where we started this second half as our score is an eight point gap between Sioux City and Salina. Stanover Steg with you once again, bringing you Bandit football each and every week here on uh, the radio home of the Sioux City Bandits. That is Fox Sports Radio 620 KMS. Salina is out to do the kickoff. And Sioux City will be ready to return said kickoff with Fred Bruno or CJ Jones, whoever decides to take the kickoff. Seems like it's been uh, Fred Bruno's night to return the football. He has had a lot of success returning kickoffs so far for Sioux City. To the tune of three returns for 80 yards, averaging 26, close to 27 yards per return. Here's Jimmy Allen out to do the kickoff. He'll send a squib kick up the right side of the football field. That's going to bounce high into the seats, into the party pit in Salina. Free kick hits the field of play and goes out of bounds. Out of bounds Ball at the, the place where it went out. eight yard it's line. Seven yard, eight yard line. First down, Sioux City. And so Sioux City will start at their own eight. First and 10 at the eight yard line. With 8.55 left to play in the third, an eight point lead for Sioux City. So the banded offense trying to keep the Liberty at arm's distance. Now a 42-yard drive upcoming for the Sioux City Bandits. Here comes the Bandit offense. It'll be Dylan Turner leading the way with Braden Mites now the man of the backfield. The one-two punch for Sioux City that well, it just seems like every other drive they switch off backs. Twins to the right. And Turner from the shotgun takes the snap, drops back to the goal line, steps up in the pocket. He has green to run to the 15, 20. Now dives forward for a first down yardage to the 20-yard line. That's a 12-yard carry and a great play by Dylan Turner, not taking the hit. And it'll be first and 10 for Sioux City at the 20. Great job by Turner, taking it closer to midfield. But first and 10 at the 20. The first down target line is the Salina 20. Single back in the backfield for Turner. Mainz is the man back there. Twins to his left, one to his right. Bruno with a crossing motion. They'll hand it off to him on another end around across midfield and across the Salina 20 for another bandit first down to the Salina 18. It's another 12-yard carry. And this time by Fred Bruno, 24 yards on two plays, brings up another first and 10 for Sioux City. Bandits are not wasting any time on this possession. Trying to score the football right now. They're within 20 yards of the end zone. And now Salina has their backs against their own end zone here at the 18 yard line. Single back formation once again for Turner under center. Takes a snap, pitches it left for Mainz. Off tackle to the 15, breaks a tackle, still on his feet to the 12. And he'll be finally shoved up against the boards at the 11 yard line. It's a carry of a seven on the play, and it will be second down and three. Time on out. The carry by Braden Mainz and a Liberty defender. Slow to get up, but he gets up in time, and he's motioning off the training staff to get off the football field. He looks like he's okay, whoever that is. And that looked like Dontre Matthews, and they will and take him off the field just for quick checkup. And so now the play will be second down and three for Sioux City. Turner will line up under center, single back in the backfield once again. Seven minutes on the third quarter clock. Twins to his right, go in motion. They'll dump it off right side. London makes the catch across the 10, and he's across the first down marker as well to the seven yard line. That's a four yard carry on the catch by London, and it'll be first and goal for Sioux City. Inside the red zone, they go to the seven yard line. 6.38 to go on the third. Sioux City trying to keep it out of reach for Salina. They've been doing a good job so far. Here's first and goal. Turner, single back in the backfield. Twins to his left, one to his right. Sends two in motion, takes the snap, hands it off to Bruno on an end around. He will get three yards on the play to the four. Great job by Bruno getting what he can, and it'll be second and goal at the four. And now the goal line formation comes out. Bubba Jenkins. And Kenneth Maxwell will sub in for Londell Lee and Fred Bruno. Maxwell the fullback and Jenkins and Mainz will be split backs. 
5.55 to go in the third. Goal line stand coming out for Sioux City on second and goal at the four. Split backs, T formation, handoff, Jenkins up the middle, and he's stuffed. He is stuffed for no gain. They're going to mark him back down at the five. That's a loss of yards by Bubba Jenkins. Looked like Jacob Latimer on the stop along with Naquan Thomas. And now it'll be third and goal at the five for Sioux City. 5.25 to go on the third. Bandits lead by eight, 37 to 29. Coach Ron O'Neill trying to give last second information to his defense. Nobody goes in motion for Turner now. They'll have that same T formation. Now they'll send two backs out of it in motion. They'll fire right side for London on a screen play. And he shoved into the boards at the three-yard line. That's a gain of two on the screen play. And now it's a tough call here for Sioux City on fourth and goal. And they're going to bring out Greg Connery. They are not going to chance this one. Salina bends but doesn't break there at the goal line. And Sioux City trying to get at least three out of it. This will be basically an extra point kick. Not much more than that. So it'll be an 18-yarder. 18 and a half, 19 yards, something like that. London likes to usually give an extra eight yards for, or eight yards off the snap for Connery. From the right hash to make it an 11 point game. Snap, ball is down, the kick is up, end over end, and it's through the uprights and good. 40 to 29, Sioux City leads the lineup with four minutes and 20 seconds media, left to play in the third quarter. Timeout. We'll take a break and we'll be back in just a minute to the Tony's Pizza Event Center in Salina, Kansas. You're listening to Bandit Indoor Football on Fox Sports Radio 620, KMS, Sioux City. Welcome back inside the Tony's Pizza Event Center in Salina, Kansas. Daniel Versteg with you on 620 Camada, iHeart Radio, and Pluto TV. Four minutes, 20 seconds left in the third quarter. Craig Conry just banged home his second field goal of the game to make it 40 to 29. And now a kickoff is going to go off the hands of a Salina up back and bounce over the backboards in the end zone for the touchback. Back to the five. Greg Connery with field. another the great kickoff. Kick kick and over and the bring end zone. it out back rule, to the five-yard line. Ball Score update. Five yard line. First Just down close Salina. to halftime. Oklahoma still leads Omaha 27 to 23 in Ralston Arena with 55 seconds left in the first half. Also in CIF play, the Duke City Gladiators lead the Savages at the halftime break 60 to six. So as of right now, if you can, Want to pay attention to the Oklahoma-Omaha game because right now we are Oklahoma fans. Bring Omaha back down to within a game of whoever is victorious in this one. 4.05 left to play in the third. Salina comes out first and 10 of their own five. Shotgun formation. Jackson drops back into the end zone. Lobs a deep ball downfield. That'll fall incomplete. Nobody even downfield. And Anthony Jones, the intended target, I guess. On the intended play downfield, looking for the end zone. C.J. Jones, the coverage, and all of that will bring up second and 10. A loud incomplete pass by Andrew Jackson. His completion percentage has hovered around 50% for most of the game. Currently now 12 of 22 passing the football. 
325 left to go in the third. Bandits lead by 11. Jackson in the shotgun once again. Trips to his right, one to his left. He takes a snap, drops back three yards into the end zone, fires left side. That pass is caught by Pargo, near side of the field. 10-5, touchdown, Salina. A 45-yard touchdown passing catch to the second best wide receiver in touchdowns this season in the CIF. That's Rashard Pargo. And the Liberty cut it to within four. It's 40 to 35 with 312 left in the third. Andrew Jackson now with his longest touchdown pass of the season at 45 yards. And the Liberty can cut it to within four here at 40 to 35 with a point after try coming up. Rashad Pargo, one of the best receivers in the league to this point stats wise. Second in touchdowns, I have a feeling he'll climb the ranks tonight. Here's Jimmy Allen out to do the point after try. Brooks to hold, snap ball is down, the kick is up, end over end, and it's good. Straight through the uprights, and it's 40 to 36. Sioux City leads Salina with 312 left in the third. Kickoff coming when we return to Salina, Kansas in 30 seconds. You're listening to Bandit Indoor Football on Fox Sports Radio 620, KMS Sioux City. up here. Jones and Bruno back deep to return. Salina potentially contemplating some trickery. Sioux City trying to prepare themselves for it. Here is Allen. He will send a normal squib kick. Right side of the field. Fred Bruno takes it to the 10. Up the middle of the field. 15-20. Has a block and is brought down on the Sioux City 21-yard line. Bruno picked that one right up off the turf. Didn't even let it take a crazy bounce on him. That's a great job by an experienced indoor football player nine-year pro out of Wayne State. He takes the kickoff 13 yards to the 21, and it'll be first and 10 for Sioux City with 3.03 left to play in the third quarter. Bandits up by four over the Liberty, 40 to 36, trying to pick up the last chance of the victory over the Liberty this season. This is the third of three games played against Salina. Second one here, the other one, of course, in Sioux City. No motion, Bruno for trips to the right of Turner under center, fakes the handoff, play action, drops back, fires left side. That pass is incomplete of Londell Lee and great coverage on the play by the Salina secondary. That looked like potentially Kendrick Harper on the stop there. Can't quite tell the number there, but great coverage down there by Salina and it'll bring up second down and 10. Loud pass and incompletion to Lee. Brings up second and 10. Single back at the backfield for Turner. Under center, twins to his right, one to his left. Takes the snap, drops back three steps, looks to pass, keeps it himself across midfield and is hit hard at the Salina 24 yard line. That's a five yard carry by Turner into Salina territory and it's third down and five for Sioux City. One minute, one minute 55 seconds left in the third. Sioux City up by four over the Liberty. So glad you could join us for this football broadcast. It's a good one, down to the wire here in this one. Third quarter, fourth quarter will be even better than this one. Sioux City, third and five. Got to get to the Salina 19 for the first down. Turner in the shotgun, who will have twins to his right, one to his left. 
Tried to hard count, drops back, keeps it himself to the 20, and he's across the first down marker to the 19. That's good enough for first down yardage on a five yard carry by Dylan Turner. They're leaving him all kinds of green to run, and he's taking advantage of those wide open pastures downfield. Wide open AstroTurf pastures, however you want to look at it. And it's first and 10 for Sioux City at the Salina 18. Turner having all day to run. He's run for 180 yards coming into this contest and nine TDs. Maybe adding another rushing touchdown. He'll have trips to his right. They'll hand it off to Bruno on an end around. He keeps it himself up the 15. Balls on the turf, and it's jumped on by Matt Ron. Oh, that was a scary play there for Sioux City. They get three yards on what Ruling almost was a turnover. By the offense, second down. Fred Bruno fumbled it. Matt Ron jumped on it, and it'll be second and seven now for Sioux City at the Salina 15. Thank goodness Matt Ron jumped on that football. We'll have second and seven here. Mainz the man in the backfield. They'll have trips to the left of Turner under center. We'll send two in motion. We got a flag on the play. All kinds of miscues here with 17 seconds left in the third. It's going to be false start on Sioux City. Snap and fraction. Expect. 64 Snap offense, fraction five on yard Sioux City. First down. Going to back him up five yards. Correction, second down. And it'll, I was going to say, they said first down, but instead second down and 12 for Sioux City at the Salina 20. Banded offense loses five yards there on a play they should have probably lost the football on had Matt Ron not been. So heads up, they are going to run out the third quarter clock. Hawk ticks down, that's the end of the third. The, third the Bandits quarter. will head to the fourth with a lead, 40 to 36. They'll switch sides of the football field and add another 15 minutes onto the game clock. 15 minutes to determine a winner and who takes sole possession of the second place position in the Northern Conference. Your Bandits lead by four. We'll be back in a minute to Salina, Kansas. You're listening to Bandit Indoor Football on Fox Sports Radio 620, KMS Sioux City. Welcome back inside the Tony's Pizza Event Center in Salina, Kansas. Daniel Versteg with you on uh, 620 Camden S, iHeart Radio, and also on Pluto TV. Bandits lead by four, thanks to 166 total yards of offense, and Salina is 184. For Salina, 172 passing yards, 12 rushing yards. Sioux City, 101 rushing yards and 65 passing yards. Sioux City likes to... Uh, differ from the norm when it comes to offensive production in indoor football. Leading the way in running the football, Frederick Bruno, seven carries, 35 yards, a TD, and Dylan Turner, five carries, 32 yards, no TDs. They swap the sides of the field, and it'll be second down and 12. At least it should be, that marker's showing second and 10. Turner in the shotgun, trips to his left. Takes a snap, drops back three steps, blitz coming, rolls out right, and will pass over the middle. That pass is intercepted by Salina. Inside the five, and giving himself up on the play is Dontre Matthews, his first interception of the season, Salina's eighth. The of the and field, Liberty take over inside their own five. By rule, the ball be placed the five-yard line. First so down Liberty Salina. will take over. At the five on first and 10 at the interception by Dontre Matthews, a CIF veteran from Victor Valley University. 
He picks off the football, and now Salina has an opportunity to take the lead with a touchdown. All right, Liberty football, Sioux City defense has to come out big time here with 14.52 left in the fourth. Thankfully, it's only a one possession game in favor of your Bandits. So a touchdown by Salina gives Sioux City all kinds of time to score, hopefully. Here's Jackson in the shotgun. He'll have twins on either end. Lone man back there. Jackson takes the shotgun snap, drops back, blitz coming, he rolls out right, fires deep down the near boards, and that pass is overthrown of Ed Smith. And incomplete, it'll bring up second down and 10 on the missed pass by Andrew Jackson. On the season, Jackson uh, with a 58% completion percentage to this point, he's thrown eight interceptions. Uh, he's showing his completion percentage pretty much here. He's been uh, basically 50% throwing the football. And 13 of 24 is what he's ruled right now. Here's second and 10 of the five. Jackson twins to the right, twins to the left, twins to the right will go in motion. Takes the snap, drops back two yards in the end zone, fires left side. That pass is caught by Brooks. And he will dive forward to the 14-yard line. Stop there made by a combination of Henry Livingston and Zach Slugger. As that spot is being put down to the 14, it'll be third down and one yard to go for the Salina Liberty at their own 14. 13.35 to play in the four. Sioux City leads the Liberty 40 to 36 in a dogfight of a football game for the second spot in the Northern Conference. Jackson in the shotgun, has twins to his right, one to his left, takes the snap, drops back to pass, dumps it off right side. That pass is caught by Craig. He's still on his feet across the 20, and he's it takes three different bandit defenders to shove him into the boards. Maxwell Jones and Randall Blash Jr. Stop him at the Salina 21, and it'll be first and 10 for the Liberty. So Salina. Running down the football here, down the field. They've gone 16 yards already. And first and 10 of their own 21. Trips to the left of Jackson, none to the right. One man in the backfield in the shotgun. Jackson takes the snap, fakes the pitch, drops back, pocket collapsing, fires over the middle. That pass is underthrown of his intended target, Anthony Jones, and incomplete. C.J. Jones on the coverage, didn't get there in time. Thankfully, the pass was underthrown, and it'll be second down and 10 for the Liberty. That's something Sioux City's done well. They've stopped Salina on first down many times in this contest, but it's the late downs that really matter. Got to be able to stop them on second and third, and also fourth. Something Sioux City has done already in this game. Twins on either end of Andrew Jackson. He lines up the lone man in the shotgun. Two in motion, takes the snap, drops back to pass, fires left side, and the pass is caught by Anthony Jones, and he is hit hard on the play by Kenneth Maxwell at the 24-yard line. And Anthony Jones is going to come off the football field after that hard hit by Kenneth Maxwell. Maxwell just lowered his shoulder and railed into Anthony Jones on that hit. It'll be third down and six at the Salina 24. Oh, the Liberty. 30, third down and six, I should say. 11.28 left to play in the fourth. Bandits lead by four over the Liberty, 40 to 36. Jackson in the shotgun, twins to his right will go in motion. He has twins to his left as well. Takes a snap, drops back, steps up in the pocket. Pressure's coming and he will keep it for first down yardage. He's shoved into the boards by Henry Livingston at the Sioux City 16 and that's first down yardage for the Liberty. Great carry there by Jackson, taking it down and running with it. And first down yardage for Salina at the 16 yard line. Salina working the offense here, working downfield. They'll have twins to the right of Jackson in the shotgun, one to his left. One receiver on either end goes in motion, takes the snap, drops back, delayed handoff, Brooks left side across the 15, 10 to the corner, five, and he dives forward, down to the boards at the two. Down to the boards, Tracy Brooks not happy that he gets denied the touchdown. He's down at the two yard line, a 14 yard carry brings up first and goal. 14 yard carry by Tracy Brooks. And it's first and goal. 
the PA announcer called it a touchdown before it was rolled a touchdown. So first and goal, Jackson under center, trips to his right. One man in the backfield, QB keeper up the middle. This time he's in. Touchdown, Salina. Andrew Jackson's fifth touchdown run of the season, and the Liberty take their first lead since early in the game. It's 42 to 40. First lead since the second quarter for the Liberty with 10.03 left to come on the fourth. Salina trying to sweep the season series against the Bandits for their third win against Sioux City if they can pull it off. It'll be their fourth win in five games and Sioux City's first loss in, a, well, three games since their last matchup against Salina. Here's the point after try coming up for Jimmy Allen. He misses the field goal, could take the lead. And here's the snap, the ball is down, the kick is up, and the kick is through the uprights and good. Liberty lead 43 to 40 over the Sioux City Bandits. 10.03 left to play in the fourth. We'll take a break, we'll be back in 30 seconds to the Tony's Pizza Event Center. You're listening to Bandit Indoor Football on Fox Sports Radio, 620 KMNS Sioux City. Welcome back inside the Tony's Pizza Event Center in Salina, Kansas. Daniel Versteg with you on Fox Sports Radio 620, KMNS, iHeart Radio, and Pluto TV. Our score with 10.03 left to play in the fourth. The Liberty take their first lead of the second half and lead your Sioux City Bandits 43 to 40. An update of a game of much importance to Bandit fans. The Omaha Beef lead the Oklahoma Flying Aces 30 to 27 at the halftime break. The other score in the CIF is Duke City leading the Savages 69 to 6 with 14.03 left to play in the third quarter of that contest. Sioux City will be returning this kickoff from Jimmy Allen, trailing by just a field goal with 10 minutes left in the fourth. Allen sends a high end over end kick out of bounds in the end zone for Free the touchback. The so Allen boots one line. out of the back of the end First zone. Down, Sioux City. First down for the Bandits at the 25. Oh, actually, they're going to say that got out of bounds before the end zone. And so Sioux City will have the football at midfield. That is not a mistake you can make if you're Salina. Bandits have the ball at midfield with an opportunity to take the lead. 9.53 to go on the fourth. Turner lines up under center. Bubba Jenkins, the back man. Twins to the left, one to the right. They'll send Bruno on an end around to fake. They'll hand it off to Jenkins up the middle to the 20. Breaks a tackle and he dives forward to the 16 yard line. A grown man's carry by Bubba Jenkins for nine yards to the Salina 16. And it's second down and one for Sioux City. Bubba Jenkins making his presence felt in this contest. For nine yards there, we'll bring up second down and one for the Sioux City Bandits. The lineup again in that same single back formation. Bruno, the lone receiver to the right side, twins to the left. They'll send two in motion. They'll take the snap and again, hand it off to Jenkins, left side to the 10, first down yardage and down inside the red zone. At the seven yard line of Salina, first and, ten, first and goal, I should say, for the Bandits on another big carry for nine yards by Bubba Jenkins, 18 yards alone on this possession for Sioux City on only two carries by Bubba Jenkins. Here's first and goal with the Salina seven. Turner runner center, single back formation. Twins to the left, one to the right. They'll take the snap, hand it off to Jenkins again, right side to the five, and he is wrapped up and brought down by a couple of Liberty defenders at the three yard line. Bubba Jenkins with the carry again, this time for four yards, and it will be second down and goal for the Sioux City Bandits at the three. I think at this point, if you don't give the football to Bubba Jenkins, it's, well, might have to go to Fred Bruno. 
But you never lo know what uh, could it be here. Single back in the backfield again, twins to the right. Send Bruno again, this time they hand it off to him on end around. They hand it back off to London. He looks for the left corner, and he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Sioux City. That's Andre London on the double end around handoff, and the Bandits lead 46 to 43. Andre London has had success on that double end around multiple times this season. And the Bandits lead by a field goal with eight minutes and a change left in the fourth. Connery out for the point after try to keep this away from a field goal. Here's the snap, high snap, ball is down, kick is up, and the kick is good. The snap ate up Andre London, but the kick is still fine for Greg Connery. 47 Media. to 43, 8.03 Media left in the fourth. A media timeout here at the Tony's Pizza Event Center means a 60 second break. We'll take a break, we'll come back to Salina, Kansas. You're listening to Bandit Indoor Football with a four point lead on Fox Sports Radio 620, Kamenes Sioux City. inside the Tony's Pizza Event Center in Salina, Kansas. Daniel Versteg with you on Fox Sports Radio, 620 KMS, iHeart Radio, and Pluto TV. Eight minutes and three seconds left to play for the second spot in the Northern Conference. Sioux City leads Salina 47 to 43. At this point in the contest, Greg Connery kicks from right to left here at the Tony's Pizza Event Center. Back deep to return is Ed Smith. They'll send a squib kick, takes a high awkward bounce, taken by Tracy Brooks at the 15, far side, across midfield to the 20, and he will be wrapped up and brought down by Bubba Jenkins. He can run the football and he can also tackle people as he brings down Tracy Brooks at the Sioux City 19. Salina with short field to work with, trailing only by four. Seven minutes and 55 seconds left to play here in this fourth. So, it's crunch time in this one. Hopefully Sioux City can hang on and continue their winning streak. Salina though has a few things to say about that as they'll have first and 10 at the Sioux City 19. The Bandits need a turnover here. Jackson with trips to his right in the shotgun. Brooks the man in the backfield. Takes the snap, hands it off on an end around to Pargo. Pargo left side to the 15. He's still on his feet to the 10 and he's ruled down at the boards. At the 12-yard line, now. Xavier Spann pushed him into the boards there. It's a carry of about eight yards on the play to Rashad Pargo. And it will be second down and two yards to go at the doorstep of the red zone here for Salina. Second down and two at the Sioux City 11. 7-10 to go in the fourth. Here comes the Liberty. Jackson trips to his right in the shotgun again. They'll hand, fake the handoff to Pargo, pitch it right for Brooks. He crosses the 10 to the five, still on his feet. He scores. Touchdown, Salina. Tracy Brooks into the end zone once again for a league leading 14th touchdown run of the contest. Henry Livingston limping off the football field. So Liberty lead by two, 49 to 47 with 6.56 left to play in the contest. 
Henry Livingston, slow to get up and is now sitting down on the turf as he's unable to limp himself off of the field. It's a tough blow for Sioux City if that is a serious injury to Henry Livingston. Must have gotten tangled up with Tracy Brooks on the carry and made it for a awkward bring down for the pros pro out of Wayne State, a fifth year pro for your Sioux City Bandits. Played in the CPIFL and many of the older leagues that Sioux City has been a part of. He's been a bandit staple in the secondary for many years. And is slow to get up and he will now be helped off the field and he jogs off the field, which is great to see as well. Great to see him jog off of the field under his own power with 6.56 left to play in the fourth. 49 to 47, Salina leads. And now the Liberty will have the point after try with Jimmy Allen. To make it a three point game in favor of the Liberty. Here we go, Tracy Brooks on to hold. Allen ready to do the point after. Hopefully Landitz can get a fingertip on it potentially. Haven't seen a block kick yet. Here is the snap. The ball is down. The kick is away and over end, and it's through the uprights and good. 50 to 47, our score. 6.56 left to play in the fourth. The Liberty lead heading into the next kickoff. We'll take a break. We'll come back in 30 seconds to the Tony's Pizza Event Center in Salina, Kansas. You're listening to Bandit Indoor Football on Fox Sports Radio, 620 KMNS Sioux City. Going to be bouncing over the head of Bruno and over the boards out of play, and it'll be a touchback kick, gets the field for and goes Sioux over City the at the five yard Ball line. Place the five yard line. First down. So Sioux City Sioux will City. have 45 yards of field to work with. Bubba Jenkins will come out onto the field on offense here, so Braden Mainz will not be the back in this possession. Bubba Jenkins did have a much better. Possession last time over 20 yards running the football in the last possession. For Bubba, though, in the contest, he has almost close to a team high. He has 10 carries, 33 yards, and a touchdown. Frederick Bruno, 35 yards. Dylan Turner, 32. And Braden Mites, 23, with Andre London, that three yard touchdown carry. Here come the Bandits on first and 10 at their own five. Turner under center, single back of the backfield. Bubba Jenkins, a yard into the end zone. Twins to the right, a crossing pattern, hands it off to Londell Lee at the 10-yard line. He breaks a tackle near boards and is shoved into the boards. They're going to rule him down at the 14-yard line, and it'll be second down and one on a trickery handoff to Londell Lee. That's his first carry of the season for nine yards. Of course, Frederick Bruno has been the end-around uh, culprit most of the season. So the, they expected a handoff to Bruno, but they gave it to Lee instead. Single back in the backfield on second and one. Turner takes the snap, fakes the handoff, drops back to pass, steps up in the pocket, keeps himself first down yardage across midfield and gives himself up at the boards at the Salina 24-yard line. That's a 12-yard carry by Dylan Turner, and it's more than enough to move the sticks for first down yardage. 
Dylan Turner does it himself most of the time with the football. It'll be first and 10 at the Salina 24. 5.30 left to play in the fourth. A field goal lead for the Liberty at 50 to 47. Single back in the backfield for Turner under center. He'll motion to trips to the left side. They'll hand it off to Jenkins up the middle. He's across the 20 and he's down hard to the turf at the eight yard line. That's a six yard a carry by Bubba Jenkins. And it will be second down and four yards to go on the carry by the former Mustang. 5-10 to play in the fourth. It's second down and four for Sioux City at the Salina 18. And the Bandits trying to score to retake the lead. Shotgun set once again for Turner. Twins to his right, one to his left. Takes the snap, hands it off to Bubba Jenkins, and he will go down right at the line of scrimmage on the carry to the left side of the field. No gain, brings up third down and four. Stop there made by Dana Harris on the play. An O-lineman, D-lineman combo. As NFL product Chris Mays has, heads to the sideline. It's third down and four. Bandits got to get across the Salina 14. They're at the Salina 18. Single back in the backfield for Turner. Twins to the right. Takes the snap, drops back three steps, fires left side. That pass is tipped up high in the air, and it's intercepted by Salina. That was a great tip drill interception for the Liberty off the hands of Fred Bruno, popped high into the air. And the Liberty have the football. Who was it that came up with it? If we can get a number, looks like Travis Taylor who came up with the interception there. That's Travis's first interception of the season, the defensive lineman with the interception. And now Salina has the football with their own nine. Boy, you knew that ball was going to be intercepted. It went off of Fred Bruno and about 10 extra feet into the air. And now the Liberty had the ball with a three-point lead. 4-12 left to play in the fourth. Now Sioux City's got to get a turnover here with 4.08 and counting here in the contest. Salina trying to go for the three-game sweep this season over the CIF rival Sioux City. That would be three of their five wins coming against the Bandits. Jackson will be in the shotgun. He'll have twins on either end of them. He takes the snap, drops back, fires left side. That pass is caught on a screen play to the far side where he is met and wrapped up and stopped a forward progress by Antonio Brown and Zach Slugger and Kenneth Maxwell, just to name a few. A short little three-yard gain on the screen play. Keeps the clock moving, and it'll be about second down and six at the Salina 13. So the Liberty, they are comfortable just running down this clock right now. 3.20 and counting in the fourth. A three-point lead for the Liberty, 50-47. to 47. Jackson, the lone man in the shotgun, trips to his right, one to his left. He takes the snap, drops back three steps, looks to pass, fires left side. That pass is caught for first down yardage. Tracy Brooks to the 20. On a short little hitch route, shoved out of bounds by Xavier Spann and Kenneth Maxwell. Clock continues to tick under three minutes as it's now first and 10 at the Salina 20. Sioux City has not been able to force a turnover yet of this contest on a Salina. And that will, if, it, if this game does not turn out, I beg your pardon, there was one fumble recovery by Sioux City, but uh, that's not good enough to win a football game, especially when Turner's thrown two interceptions. Shotgun formation for Jackson, two to his right, takes a snap, delayed handoff, Brooks up the middle, he gets first down yardage to the 20, and he is down at the Sioux City 20. There's flags everywhere on the play. Right now at midfield are where both flags are. They're at the same spot, so they're on the same penalty. And I think we might be getting some kind of downfield holding block. Holding. And we do. Number three offense. On Salina. Ten yard penalty for the spot of the foul. So it's Repeat. a ten yard penalty first from down. the spot of the foul. Bails out Sioux City. Back to the 15. And it'll be first and 15. Now for the Salina Liberty. Ed Smith, the wide receiver from Fort Hayes State. The one whistled for the holding penalty downfield. So now what turned into a first down to carry by Tracy Brooks now is a first and 15 at the Salina 15. Jackson will be in the shotgun who have trips to his left, one to his right. No man in the backfield for Jackson. Takes the snap, drops back, fires a screen pass left side. That pass is caught by 
Tyler Jones across midfield to the Sioux City 24. A carry of 11 yards on the catch by Jones. And it will now be second down and four for the Liberty at the Sioux City 24. Jones, a CIF vet from Central Missouri. 140 left to play in the fourth. The Liberty lead by a field goal over your Sioux City band. It's 50 to 47. Salina handed Sioux City their worst loss of the season. 65-45 was the final here at the Tony's Pizza Event Center last time. Here's second and four. Shotgun set. Jackson trips to his right, takes the snap, fakes the handoff, keeps himself right side, a block to the outside, and he's got first down yardage to the Sioux City 18-yard line. It's a six-yard carry by the Seton Hall quarterback, Andrew Jackson, and it's first and 10 in deeper to Sioux City territory. Clock will tick down to the one-minute warning. One minute warning. Sioux City down one to crunch time, time with our score, 50 effect. to 47. Salina has three timeouts. Sioux City Salina. has three timeouts. Leading by three Media. over the Bandits with a minute Time left. Out. Each team with their full slate of timeouts left. We'll take a break with a media timeout and be back in 30 seconds. You're listening to Bandit Indoor Football on Fox Sports Radio 620, KMS Sioux City. Fires right side, it's caught. Touchdown, Salina. It's Tracy Brooks who makes the catch in the end zone. I beg your pardon, Ed Smith makes the catch for six, and the Liberty lead 56 to 47 over the Sioux City Bandits with 56 seconds left in the fourth. Sioux City in danger of losing their third road game of the season, second game in the Salina area. So a, f a point after try makes this a 10-point game in favor of the Liberty with 56 seconds left to play. Jimmy Allen out for the point after try. If he misses a touchdown and a field goal, could potentially take the lead. Here we go. Snap ball is down, kick is up, and the kick is to the uprights good. 57-47, Salina leads, 56 seconds left to play in the fourth. Flag on the play, though. Something we will have to see what the call is before we go to a break. There's Let's no see. foul on the play. The defender was blocked in the holder. The try is good. The try is good. Whatever, whatever the flag was, doesn't matter. The try is good. Salina leads by 10 with 56 seconds left. We'll take a break. We'll come back in 30 seconds to Salina, Kansas. You're listening to Bandit Indoor Football on Fox Sports Radio 620 KMS Sioux City.
Welcome back inside the raucous Tony's Pizza Event Center in Salina, Kansas. The Liberty Faithful happy with the outcome right now. 57 to 47, Liberty lead your Sioux City Bandits with 56 seconds and that's all left here in the fourth quarter. The Bandits need a touchdown and a field goal. However, the order they get it doesn't matter, but they need to score and recover an onside kick. That's their only outcome right now. They do still have all three timeouts. They didn't have to use any on the last possession because they, well, gave up a touchdown after the one minute warning. Squib kick up the middle of the field, goes off of CJ Jones. The ball is loose and Fred Bruno takes it at the 10, runs backwards and he's brought down at the eight yard line they're gonna rule him down at. Boy, Sioux City's lucky to even be in possession of the football, Fred Bruno. Recovers it off of C.J. Jones, who tried to maybe cut that kick return off a little bit more than he probably should have. And now it's first and ten for Sioux City at their own eight. So the banded offense needs to score here. 51 seconds left in the fourth. Banded offense comes out on the field. They'll be throwing the football here. I don't suspect any run plays coming up. They do have a four-receiver set. Braden Mites, one of the receivers to the left side. Twins on either end of Turner and the shotgun. No man in the backfield for him. Takes the snap, drops back to the goal line, fires over the middle. That pass is tipped away at the line of scrimmage by Dana Harris and incomplete. It'll bring up second down and 10 with only three seconds taken off the clock. To make it 48 seconds left in fourth quarter action. Bandits trail by 10 to the Liberty, 57 to 47. Sioux City trying to hang on and make something happen here in the fourth quarter. It would take a, just short of a miracle to tie the game, let alone take the lead here in the fourth. Same four receiver set for Turner. Twins on either end, takes the snap, drops back to the goal line, rolls out right, fires right side. That pass is caught by Andre London at midfield. And it's completed, clock will stop on the far side of the football field. That's a great catch by London. As he gets 17 yards to midfield, clock stops at 42 seconds. First down. And the Bandits will take over at midfield on first and 10. Salina is wanting a penalty of some kind. I don't know what. Now we got a challenge flag. They're going to, Coach Ron O'Neill is going to challenge whether Andre London hang, hung on to the football or not. Please reset the game clock to 38 seconds. 38, the clock, clock is going to reset to 38 seconds. Yeah, the clock was seconds. running for no reason. It stopped at 42 at the end of the play you and then so continued cool. running. The previous play is being challenged by Salina of an incomplete pass. So Salina is going to challenge the incomplete pass. And now the question is whether they had a good camera angle of it or not because as of right now I don't know if there's a good angle of this one I think the call will have to stand on the field that they can't find anything that can change the officials mind on this call we'll have to see what ends up happening with this call 38 seconds left in the fourth we'll keep it here and we'll Check out some scores from around the CIF. Wow, Duke City has put up 100 over the NXT Savages, 101 to six. And there's still a quarter remaining in that contest. Still updated, the last score that we've seen between Oklahoma and Omaha is the Beef leading the Flying Aces 30 to 27 at the halftime break, an updated score. If you have it, would be greatly appreciated. Sioux City trails by 10. 57-47 with 38 seconds left in the fourth. Salina challenges the call of a catch by Andre London. And it's trying to bring it back within 10. If you're wondering the next time you can catch your Bandits in action, it is next Saturday against the Wichita Force. 7.05 kickoff, we'll have the pregame for you as we do each and every Bandit game right here on 620 Camden S. And the NTX Savages will come to town to take on the Bandits on the 8th of June. That's the last home game of the season for Sioux City. Then it's at Oklahoma and at Omaha to round things out in CIF play. 
Well, the Bandits can somehow pull this one out. They'll take sole possession of second place in the Northern Conference and would do wonders for their playoff standings. But as of right now, if the game ends as we think it will, Salina will be 5-3. and three. Sioux City will be back to 500 at 4-4. Four and four. So for Sioux City to move on, it would take Salina to lose two games at minimum and for Sioux City to win their last four games out at minimum. And uh, the only other scenario, Salina losing three and Sioux City winning three out of four. It's the only other way, and there's unless Salina drops four and Sioux City only wins two, something like that. However you want to draw it up. It has to be a two-game differential in the last four games of the season. So if Salina wins two, Sioux City is done for the year in the last four games of the season because Salina does own the tiebreaker, regardless of how this game turns out. So we are, a, who are, who are we fans of? We're fans of Omaha to try and shut down Salina twice in the next four games. That's a possibility, and they're at Wichita as well, and then at defending champs, the Duke City Gladiators, to round out the regular season. So a very tough rest of the schedule for Salina to try and take two of four out of. Sioux City has got a bit of an easier schedule. They do have to play Omaha still, but they did beat Omaha. They're, they are still Omaha's only loss of the season to this point. And so Sioux City trying to Oh, hang on for dear life and their postseason hopes. But as of right now, they're trailing by 10 to the Salina Liberty, 57 to 47. 38 seconds left to play in the fourth quarter. Currently, right now on the field, a play being under review by our officiating crew. Right now, results of the play is a first down completion to Andre London at midfield. He reached over the boards to go out of bounds and in doing so lost control of the football and was unable to hang on. Our officials come out from under the tunnel and this will be a big call. And we'll see. After further review, the ruling on the field is reversed to an incomplete pass. The call is reversed. It's an incompletion. And, and Sioux City is going to be backed up. Back to the eight yards. Eight yard line, I should say. They're gonna be backed up 17 yards. It'll be third down and 10 for Sioux City. And in doing so, Aaron O'Neill does not use a timeout. And now Sioux City, I think a score on this play is probably the last outcome that the Bandits can have. Third and 10 at the Sioux City eight. Turner in the shotgun, he has trips to his left. One man in the backfield in Braden Mines. He'll send two in motion, takes the snap, drops back to the goal line, looks to pass, rolls out left. The pressure is coming. He's going to keep it himself to the 15-20 and now jumps over the boards at the 21-yard line. That stops the clock at the 31-second mark. It's first down yardage for Dylan Turner. Good enough as a 14-yard pass out of bounds, and that works as well. It did eat up seven seconds of the game clock, and now the Bandits have it at their own 22 on first and 10. 31 seconds left in the four. Turner in the shotgun. Twins to his right, one to his left. Now though motion Bruno to the right side for trips. Drops back to pass. Looks, steps up in the pocket. Keeps it himself across midfield to the 20. Chase from behind. And he goes out of bounds inside the 15-yard line. Boy, Salina is biting on deep ball opportunities. And Dylan Turner is taking advantage of it. He does eat up six seconds to the Salina 14 with 25 seconds left in the fourth. Sioux City trying to work their way downfield. So Dylan Turner in the shotgun once again on first and 10. 25 seconds left in the game. He'll have trips to his right after the motion. Takes the snap, drops back, looks for the end zone, fires right side. That pass is caught by Andre London at the six yard line. And a timeout will be called by Sioux City with 18 seconds left Time in out. the fourth. Sioux City, first charge of the half. So it's in 30 seconds eight in length. yard gain on the pass to Andre London. It brings up second down and two yards to go for Sioux City inside the red zone. 18 seconds left of the four. Sioux City trails by 10 with our score 57 to 47 in favor of the Liberty. 
18 seconds left to go. Boy, Sioux City hoping to make something happen here in the waning seconds. They do have two timeouts left. But things are looking a little bleak here for the Bandits. Shotgun formation on second and two inside the red zone at the Salina six. Twins to the right of Dylan Turner. They'll motion Bruno to the right for trips. He takes the snap, drops back to pass, and he's sacked. Jacob Latimer on the sack along with Salinas Dana Harris. He's dropped at the 10 and a timeout called by Sioux City with 12 seconds. And that sack should about do it. It'll be third down and six at the 10. Still at the red zone, but Sioux City, I think, is going to fall in this one to even up their record at four and four. So now Sioux City, they got to score a touchdown here at some point and hope there's time left on the clock for an onside kick recovery. If not, this ball game is over. And I don't see any of that happening to this point. Sioux City has struggled immensely trying to score in the second half. They've given up 35 to the Liberty in the second half and have in return scored only 17. Here's Dylan Turner on the shotgun. He'll have trips to his right. They have to score on this play. Third and six at the 10. Drops back to pass. Looks for the end zone. Fires right side. It's incomplete with seven ticks on the clock. And it'll now be fourth down and six for Sioux City. And I think that should be the la well, this should be the last play of the game. They might have two seconds left afterwards, but Sioux City is down to their final option. Here we go. The Liberty Faithful getting on their feet, trying to make some noise, get behind their Salina defense. Seven seconds of the fourth, 57-47, four receiver set. Turner in the shotgun, drops back to pass, fires right side for the end zone. And it's caught! It is caught! In the back of the end zone. What a catch made by Londell Lee. He climbs the building to make a fabulous one-handed catch with the right hand. I don't know how Londell Lee came up with that football. And the Bandits now have a 57-53 deficit with two seconds left in the fourth. It's still highly improbable that this turns out any differently, but Greg Connery out to do the point after try and a highlight real catch by Londell Lee. So Connery, if he misses the point after, this one's for sure done. There's a glimmer of hope if he makes it. Here's the snap, ball is down, kick is away, and the kick is good. 57 to 4, 54, two seconds left of the fourth. And now it takes a one second onside kick recovery. That's the only play they've got left. Boy, I don't know how Londell Lee came down with that football, but he somehow did. Boy, that is the catch of the year so far. Unfortunately, it will might, might not have any impact on this game once all is said and done. So now Sioux City faces a potential onside kick. Of course, there could be some trickery. It could end up being so obvious with an onside kick that you kick it all the way downfield and try and recover it in the end zone to win. Boy, that is a very highly improbable thing. Salina will be thinking of that one, I think. I should hope Salina has thought of that op option anyway. Two seconds left in the fourth. The Bandits down to their final chance, 57-54. Sioux City trails and is trying not to lose their third loss to Salina this season. Four losses for Sioux City if things hold out the way they are right now. Four losses for Sioux City, three of them have come to Salina. If you take out those games, Sioux City's four and one. 
against Omaha, Wichita, Oklahoma, and Amarillo. There are four victories and one loss extra coming to Amarillo, but the three of four losses to Sioux City have come at the hands of the Salina Liberty. Salina has been the kryptonite for Sioux City this season and continues to do so with two seconds left. 57 to 54, Liberty leads Sioux City. And now the Bandits will have a desperation kickoff. If they can recover it in favorable position with favor favorable time, I should say, then this game could continue and they might give an opportunity for Connery to kick a field goal, I should say. But I don't think they're gonna have time left. The only thing you hope is that maybe the clock operator makes an error or misses the start button. Who, who knows what could you could hope for anyway. So seven Liberty defender, I beg your pardon. Yeah, only yeah, seven Liberty defenders on the left side of the foot, cheating to the left side of the football field, I should say. We got a timeout called by Salina. Timeout. Salina. Gonna talk things First over here with two seconds half. left of the fourth. We'll take a look at the score in Champions Indoor Football with Duke City and uh, the Savages. It's entertaining to see how they get their score. 109 to 6 is the score. Gladiators leading the NXT Savages. I'll see if I can get a score in the Omaha Beef game. Try and keep you updated on that one. Oklahoma is our team of choice. But uh, we will see if that ends up happening. No score from what I can find between Oklahoma and Omaha. Let's see what we can get here. It's a kickoff here for Greg Connery. Two seconds left of the fourth. And Sioux City does not have much chance left, I don't think. But things have been weirder in indoor football, to say the least. Let's see what ends up happening here. Connery, ready for the onside kick with two seconds. He'll send it, does it go 10 yards? It does, it's recovered by Sioux City. Did he get down in time though? Sioux City recovered the onside kick, the clock wound down, and now here comes the coaching staff for Sioux City. They're going to have an argument and a half. They want to see if the clock still had time left, but I don't think they have an argument here. Sioux City did a phenomenal job recovering that onside kick. If there's time on the clock, Sioux City has a desperation field goal to tie it. But I don't think they've got any time left. Our officials are huddling. Somehow, Braden Mainz ended up with a football. And we have Bedlam here in Salina, depending on what this call is. Did the clock start before the ball was touched? That's the next question. If it started before the ball was touched, here's the, the call. The ruling on the field is illegal touching the, by the kicking team. The previous play is under review. So it is illegal touching called by the kicking team, and the play is under review. I think, think they challenged to make sure there's time left on the clock or not. I think with the penalty, though, this will run down the clock, though, I believe. I think that will do it if that penalty stands and the clock is ruled to be out of time. I think Salina is ready to head to the locker room already. Boy, I don't think there's any argument here for Sioux City. That's a desperation challenge, though. You can do what you can. I don't know if he's got an argument, though. I can't see anything that gives any more time. Salina's already started their high five circle. They're confident there's no time left. I think Sioux City probably knows it as well. And I think this one's going to end a 57-54 final in favor of the Liberty. It'll be the third victory Salina has claimed over the Bandits this season. Thankfully, for if you're a Sioux City fan, we do not have to come back to Salina 
or place Salina at all in the regular season. But this play under review, I think the game is all but over, but we're still awaiting the final call. This last call will do it here for Sioux City, put the thorn in their side and end the game. 57-54, our score, Liberty lead the Bandits, currently have beaten the Bandits, but we might have time on the clock depending on what happens. I don't know. It's We're talking tenths of a second, hundredths of a second if we're lucky. Coming up will be our post-game wrap-up. We'll get you stats and scores. We'll somehow find a score of that Omaha-Oklahoma game. Hopefully somebody can help out. If you are on Twitter, tweet me at DanielVSPXP. Get me the score of Omaha and Oklahoma if you got it. And we'll get you updated on uh, things around the CIF as Sioux City trailing by three, 57-54. Boy, Sioux City, they're all but one challenge missed away from losing this contest. And I don't think, well, our officials are taking a nice long time. I, I appreciate that. They didn't just go under the hood and come right back out. The, the officials are making sure they're going to get the right call before things are said and done here in Salina, Kansas. Teams are meeting at midfield, though. Most of the Sioux City bench has emptied its way out to midfield. The Salina bench is all but empty, aside from a few coaching members. Our officials taking their sweet time. But uh, the Bandits more than likely falling to four and four and back into that third spot in the Northern Conference. Salina will more than likely jump up to five and three to take sole possession of second place and defend, depending on what happens with Omaha and Oklahoma. Could make that a one game lead in the North and make things very interesting. But not a lot of time left in this one. If any, our officials come out of the huddle and this will determine whether we got more football to play or not. Let's see. Get off of the PA system. After review, the ball was illegally touched before going 10 yards by Sioux City. However, because an ineligible player touches the ball, there's two seconds remaining in the game. And so we will have to redo this onside kick. Oh my goodness. In case you didn't hear, the illegal touching will stand. But there will be two seconds left in the game. They can't... I actually can't re-kick this, unfortunately. It's just going to be a penalty on Sioux City. So maybe something happens on the QB keeper. But uh, I'm not holding my breath too much. Force a fumble on Andrew Jackson. Who knows? We'll see. But that's pretty much the only way we can have it here. Two seconds left in the game. Salina will have one final play. 57-54, Salina leads Sioux City. Two seconds left. Salina has an offensive play. Andrew Jackson will keep it himself. Wants to snap it. He's not even going to attempt a QB sneak. He can just back up and take a knee. Raced out the clock. That's all he needs to do. And this game will be over. So here we go. Jackson back there in the victory formation. He backs up, waits for the time to run out, takes a knee, and that will be the end of the ball game. Final score, Salina 57, Sioux City 54. The Bandits fall to 500 at 4-4 four and four on the season. Salina 5-3, and three, no doubt about it now. As this football game is over. Sioux City with a great final effort afterwards, but it was too little too late. As the Liberty are victorious for the third time against your Sioux City Bandits this season alone after the Bandits defeated the Liberty in the postseason last year in the Northern Conference semis. 57-54, final score. Liberty are victorious. 5-3 are the record for the Liberty, and the Bandits 4-4 four four 
on the season. We'll take a break. We'll come back in a few minutes to Salina, Kansas, to wrap things up from the Tony's Pizza Event Center. You're listening to Banded Indoor Football on Fox Sports Radio 620 KMS Sioux City. And welcome back one final time to Salina, Kansas. Daniel Versteg with you at the Tony's Pizza Event Center wrapping things up as the Salina Liberty are victorious over your Sioux City Bandits by the final score of 57 to 44. The record for Salina now five and three on the season. They take sole possession of a second place in the Northern Conference and have won four of their last five games. Sioux City snaps a three game winning streak they are now